following is an exclusive presentation of Jefferson Pilot Sports, a division of Jefferson Pilot Financial. Hey, y'all, we're Brooks and Dunn. Ah, uh, ooh -hoo. Let's play some football. Headbuss, low three. One, two, three. Headbuss. Mississippi State invades the loveliest village on the plains to take on SEC defending champs, the Auburn Tigers. Hey, let's play some football on Jefferson Pilot Sports. And here come the Auburn Tigers as they play into week number two of the 2005 football season. Over 80,000 on hand trying to get their Tigers back to their winning ways as today the Tigers will play host to Mississippi State. It's our all-tell SEC football game of the week. And hello again, everybody. I am Dave Neal. This series goes back to 1905. A lot of history between these two clubs, but of late, Mississippi State comes in here 1-0. The Auburn Tigers 0-1, a little bit of a shock in that regard. But nonetheless, this Auburn football team has high aspirations. Sure, their 15-game winning streak was snapped, but they have won nine straight SEC contests, and they'll try to keep that ball rolling here today. The man joining me, my partner, Dave Rowe. And Dave, there's been a lot of talk around these parts about Auburn losing that opener to Georgia Tech. Obviously a disappointing loss, but yet the coaches and the players realize, hey, you know what? The real season starts right now. That's absolutely true, Dave. What, what Auburn has to do is just forget about it. It was a tough loss, but they have to concentrate on today. This is Mississippi State. This is the start of the SEC. Well, let's talk about this Auburn team. Brandon Cox gets his first start as a sophomore last week. Threw it 44 times, but four interceptions. Your thoughts about him and how he heads into week two? Well, Brandon Cox is going to be a great quarterback, and I say going to be because he has all the tools, but he's young. He's just a sophomore. I played with some great quarterbacks. You cannot throw four interceptions and expect to win. Well, Dave, as far as Mississippi State is concerned, a very young athletic team and perhaps the most unsung running back in college football might be this man, Jarius Norwood. Oh, man. When you look at running backs, he has all the great things that you see in him. Great vision, explosion through the hole. He's, he can run with a bandit. But there's something that he has, Dave, that's incredible, and that's his heart. He is a tough, tough kid. That leads me to our keys to the game today. What are our Toyota keys to the game in terms of how you see it? Well, first of all, for Mississippi State, they need a dog day afternoon. They, we just talked about Jarius Norwood. That's exactly what they need. Grind it out. Come out there. Let that big offensive line set the tone. And for Auburn Tigers, don't give it away. Last week, they gave the ball away five times. Four interceptions, a fumble, and add to that some procedure penalties, Dave. They had a really tough day. Can't win like that. 11 penalties for the Auburn Tigers. Cannot afford those kind of numbers here on week number two of the SEC football season. Auburn wins the toss and they elect to receive right out of the gate. So Mississippi State in their all white road uniforms against Auburn in their blue tops and white pants will return it. Keith Andrews to kick off for the Bulldogs. Devin Aroma should do and Brad Lester back deep for the Tigers. A lot of orange inside Jordan Hare Stadium. And we are underway. Aroma Shadu will take a knee in the end zone and Auburn will bring it out to the 20-yard line. As always, I guess you could say the key member of this operation is down <laughs> on the sideline, Dave Buzzbaker. Buzz, what do you got? Hey, guys, good afternoon. Marcus McNeil, he's 6'7", 300, plus, plus, plus. 
44 passes last week for Auburn. How do you renege that? What you do is you go behind Marcus McNeil, you get the ground game going, and you follow the big guy. He had a white suit on at SEC Media Days. You know what he said? He said, I borrowed a tablecloth from Coach Tuberville to make this. <laughs> if there were one row left at the dinner table, Dave Neal and Marcus was across from Dave Rowe, what would it be? <laughs> big man on big man. Amen. Amen, brother. <laughs> you got that right, Buzz. First handoff goes to Trey Smith across the 20, gets a couple. Quentin Culberson out of his middle linebacker position makes the initial stop for the Bulldogs. Our Chevy starting lineups look like this for the Auburn Tigers. It'll be Trey Smith, who a lot of people will look for today to kind of have a breakout game. Only 13 carries last week. Uh, numbers that he certainly would like to see a little more carries, but the situation dictated more passing through the air. We talked about Marcus McNeil, but this is a pretty good lineup, and that right tackle, Troy Reddick, makes a good anchor on the other side across from Marcus McNeil. And the big center of concern is the center position. Joe Cope, Stephen Ross, they need to spread time. Some big running out of Carl Stewart, the sophomore out of Alcoa, Tennessee, picks up nine and a Auburn first down. Here's our Chevy defensive lineups. Willie Evans, Andrew Powell, Delwan Robinson, and Michael Hurd. Good group of front four, Absolutely. if you will. Good, for solid. And how about the linebacking core? Not big, Dave, but they are very athletic and mobile. Get to the ball in a hurry, Dave. They're very, very quick. And in the secondary, some uh, some guys that uh, can be good. Uh, not a very uh, deep secondary. Some young players. We'll see some action like Kit, uh, Keith Fitzhugh, Derek Pegues today. A couple of freshmen who are highly touted. We'll see some action. Kenny Irons breaks free across midfield into Mississippi State territory. Knocked down at the 46. A 23-yard pickup for the Tigers. Boy, and a great play fake by Brandon Cox. When he took the ball off center, he's looking, see him looking downfield. Last minute dump it out there. He's got the big man out in front of him there. You see them picking up downfield and just allow somebody like that just to get out and run with the football. Super call. The first and 10 at the 46-yard line. Kenny Irons, the transfer out of South Carolina. Now Brad Lester makes an appearance in the backfield. Dave, that's the fourth running back already today for Auburn. And Lester stumbles on the handoff and loses five, maybe more than that. Willie Evans read it well and made the play. A loss of six or seven. And Dave, when he looked up, Willie Evans had gotten great penetration off the line. He wears number 36. You think about him as being a linebacker, but look at the penetration right there. You see him right there? He's out in the play. That's what caused Irons to stumble with the ball. We are back to the top of the rotation. <laughs> now it's Trey <laughs> Smith back in at, ro at running back, as you see the numbers for Willie Evans. Fortunately, they can only start two at a time. <laughs> out of the eye formation on second down and a long 15. Here's the toss sweep. Trey Smith tripped up right around midfield. They'll still be a few yards shy of the original first down line. A line of scrimmage, I should say. Boy, Dockery made a nice play on that, Dave. He had to come up from that corner spot. He came up, not only forced it, but got into the tackle. That's up play. Dockery, the senior out of Hernando, Mississippi. He and David Hurd are the starting corners. Jeremy Johnson, Demario Bobo play that safety position. And a timeout taken by the Bulldogs on a long third down. Ellis Johnson, the defensive coordinator, wondering what that's all about. We'll take a break. Back to Auburn after this. Some of the uh, hardware and pigskin that the Auburn Tiger football team captured in 2004. The Sugar Bowl trophy was in there. That's the Sugar Bowl football. We saw Jim Thorpe Award. Carlos Rogers won that a year ago. What a great run by the Auburn Tigers. 13 and 0, but 2005, as everybody will tell you around here, is a different story. Cox to throw. Bobbled nearly hung in the air long enough for Kevin Dockery to come over and pick it off, but Derek Pegues, the freshman on the coverage for Mississippi State. Boy, the one thing you don't want to do is tip this ball up. Watch the reaction back to the ball. It gets tipped up, should have been caught right there. Look at this, come in there, it's hot. Almost an interception, really close. Good coverage. There's Derek Pegues, Dave, the 5'10", uh, 190-pound freshman considered probably Mississippi State's top recruit along with his counterpart at the other side, Keith Fitzhugh, another freshman who turned down offers from uh, Notre Dame, Southern Cal, and even Auburn. 
Cordy Bliss to punt it away. Jonathan Lowe lets it go. And is it saved? And oh. If it is, that is one heck of a play. Montavis Pitts flying down the field. Kept his wits about him and kept the ball in play. Dave, that gets a wow. At first, I thought he was going to catch it. Now, did it break the plane? I think the officials are saying that it might have broken the plane. But watch this. He tries it now. Where is the plane? Look at that effort right there. I think the official was on top of it. I think he did break the plane, but what an effort. See, right there. Oh, yeah, he's in. He's into the end zone, Dave. From that angle, it looks like it. Yeah. And this is a reviewable play since it involves uh, one of the lines end zone line, a sideline, the goal line. Well, they just realize if it breaks the plane of the end zone, doesn't have to hit in the end zone, just has to break that plane of the line. But tremendous effort. Well, not conclusive enough one way or the other to overrule the call on the field and movement right out of the gates. From Jeremy Jones, who gets the start today at tied in for Eric Butler, who was nursing a bad ankle. Snap, full start, 84 on the offense. Five yards out of it, remains first down. Referee Matt Austin today as we look at our Chevy starting lineups. Keon Humphreys, boy, what a breakout oh. game. The young man, don't know a lot about him because he hasn't played a whole lot of football. Up front, Chris McNeil anchors that line at center. Avery Housen, one of the tackle spots. We'll keep an eye on him today. Here's Norwood. Gets met as he gets a couple on the play by Ontarius Williams. Let's take a look at that Auburn defense. Quentin Groves gets a start today. He was uh, playing a little bit of second team with the Marquise Gunn, but moves over to the end to play Stanley McClubber, who will see some time today. The linebackers, Williams, D.D. and Williams, pretty good. And in the Secondary, Will, Will Herring, Patrick Lee, David Irons, and Eric Brock. Herring with three interceptions a year ago. Play action. Connor throws on the run, gets it out to the 25-yard line. That will be five yards shy. T. Millens makes the grab. Patrick Lee on the tackle. One of the things that Mississippi State wanted to do was get Omar Connor outside. Look at this. Drive him deep, then turn back up, be a target. Connor throws really well, getting outside on the edge, and that's what Georgia Tech did so well against this Auburn team. Get Connor outside, don't let him feel that pressure, have to sit in the pocket. Georgia Tech with a lot of hitches in their routes. And then would go deep and have a big play with Calvin Johnson. Here's Connor. A little out pattern, close to the 30-yard line, bobbled it out of bounds, it'll be ruled incomplete, and that will bring up a fourth down. Keon Humphreys made the catch. Patrick Lee on the coverage. And Dave, that's why you tackle through people. And that's exactly what Patrick Lee did on that play. Tackled through him, broke it up. Stopped the first down. They're going to get it back for Auburn's offense. Well, the freshman Blake McAdams will step in and punt for Mississippi State. The freshman out of Ripley, Tennessee, originally committed to Ole Miss, but when Coach David Cutcliffe was let go in uh, Oxford, he decided to transfer or change his mind and head to Starkville. Good kick. Trey Smith back to the 29. Trey's got some room to take it to the 40-yard line. And then a convergence of white jerseys led by Lance Long bring him down there. We will return to Auburn after a word from your local stations. Tuberville was there. Shut Sports coach of, coach of the Year last season. Hand off to the left Number side. Goes to Carl, Carl Stewart. Stewart. Not much Stewart. happening. Demario Bobo comes up to make the play. Loss of two on the Stop play. On the play made by number six, Demario Bobo. And number well, if you're Auburn in this situation, Dave, and Sylvester Croom knows this, you're going to try to drive the ball down. You had a good drive that first Play one, and he knows it. He knows he's got to stop him on first down, get pressure on him. But Auburn wants to take control of this football game. He doesn't want to allow it to happen. He seemed pretty confident with his guys. He yeah. knows there's still a ways to go, but he has been very impressed with their work effort, their desire to learn. Over the middle, Cooper Wallace gets to midfield, close to a first down. 
Mississippi State coming with a lot of pressure on Brandon Cox, but they picked it up. Give that credit to that offensive line. Gets bumped down late. But Cooper Wallace, 265. Big target. Puts that ball. Look how he cradles that ball underneath there. Protects it. He's a big target. And they really like him coming off the ball. You see his last year stats. 19 catches, averaged almost 16 per reception. Pretty good numbers for a tight end as they roll in the chains. And that'll be just shy of that first down. Our Chick-fil-A nugget of the game today. How about this nugget? Yeah. Now these are, I mean, these are currently playing graduates. These aren't last year. These are guys are actually on the field today. And Auburn is second with nine. They lead the SEC in that department. Nine players on Auburn have actually received their degrees, and there's Alabama and Kentucky with seven each as well. Quarterback sneak by Brandon Cox, and that should be good enough for the first down. You know what's interesting? Quarterback sneaks always, they just kill me. What you can all, all you're doing if a defensive lineman is just getting down low. If you're an offensive lineman, what you're trying to do is get your shoulders into their shoulders. Don't get stuffed back. I don't like the play. I've said it many, many times. You've got running backs back there that are, I mean, they're the guys, they're the workhorses. Give it to them. Quarterback stand there <laughs> flat footed. He's skinny, he's 6'2, 202 pounds. Give it to one of the hosses. Okay, slow it down, big fella. Slow it down. <laughs> Oh, uh, to the 46 hey, goes I, Carl Stewart. I never saw Stabler ever do a quarterback. <laughs> you know, I was watching Joe Cope there, number 50. Right there, you see him looking, scooping out. He's got a good block there. Run the long. He has to get across the shoulder, then pick up the guard. He does. That's a good job. Joe Cope, that's exactly what they need out of him. Center has been a big question mark. They were going to share a lot. Cope and uh, Stephen Ross, number 74. Yeah, we said uh, coaches told us we'd see both guys playing some center today. On second down, it's the tight end Wallace to the 40, tries to shake the intended tackler, Clarence McDougal, but couldn't do it, but close to the first down regardless. This is a drag off the line. See him, he hits in the low, and looks like he's blocking, then he comes down the line, just a drag off the line, and the big man knows what to do, and he's got real soft hands, and he's big, he catches the football. Our Hummer scoreboard shows us Clemson trailing by three in the second to Maryland. Notre Dame marched it down the field on their first drive of the game to lead Michigan up in Ann Arbor. They're seven to nothing, wow. fighting Irish. Tommy Tuberville, who maybe spurned some offers. Who knows really what yeah. happened last year? It's some uh, interest in at LSU. His name, as always, pops up, oh, but sure. uh, turned it down and uh, stays here and signs a seven-year contract worth in the neighborhood of $18 million with huge buyouts if he leaves or the school gets rid of him. So yeah. he's pretty much here, folks. Let me tell you something. <laughs> yeah. You better like Mr. Tuberville for a long while. <laughs> But a fun guy to sit down and talk with. You know, he said last week we didn't play well, but we didn't play poor enough to lose. We just didn't put it all together. And Dave, you can't you can't have that many turnovers. Five giveaways where they four interceptions and a fumble, and then the procedure penalties. It stopped all their drives, their momentum, and everything. He knows he's got a good team, and he said, hey, you gotta bear with Brandon Cox. He's not Jason Campbell. But he is going, as he said, he is going to be a really, really good one, if not great quarterback when yes. it's all over. Absolutely. Kenny Irons at tailback. Couple of tight ends in the football game. Another quarterback sneak. Dave, don't say it. Don't say it. It worked. It's a first down. I know. Well, the reason it worked, big man on big man. That's why it worked. You give it to the skilled positions, the offensive line, defensive line. And Joe Cope got a good block there. Did you see him leading the way? What the quarterback does on that play is he just comes up and just kind of lifts his hand behind the quarter of the uh, center's butt, and he takes off. A couple of tight ends, single setback in the game is Kenny Irons. On first down and 10 for the Mississippi State, 37. It's a nifty running by wow. Irons. The 200-pounder out of Nikula, Georgia. Dave, there was nothing outside for Irons. Did you see that plant and dart back inside? You pointed it out right there. Plant, get back inside, pick up positive yards. That is the mark of a good running back. 
now. Mississippi State, if they want to stay in this and stop this drive, they've got to get penetration. Willie Evans, the 36 on the outside, is one of those type guys that can make a big play. But they need to stop Auburn from this drive. Knox throws it up wide open, middle of the field. Cole Bennett to the five. Touchdown, Tigers. 34 yards. Well, I want to say that Brad, that uh, Cole made a great run, but look at this. Cox picks him open. He was wide open in the middle. Cole Bennett just catches that football. Look at him, wide open. Had to be a break in coverage. You don't have anybody that wide open in the middle. And the big man in the same kind of a mold as a Cooper Wallace, big size, 260 pounds. John Vaughn to attempt the point after, and he does so perfectly. So Auburn strikes first. They lead seven to nothing. Cole Bennett, the junior out of Dalton, Georgia, on the receiving end of a Brandon Cox touchdown pass. Back after this. Auburn leads it by a touchdown. They picked up two first downs on that drive, which was uh, half of their total of the Georgia Tech game. They were four out of 11 on third downs against the Yellow Jackets. They are two out of three today. Back deep, Derek Pagese, the freshman for the Bulldogs. Kick falls at the eight-yard line for Begis. The freshman to the 35, to the 40, across midfield and tripped up by Zach Kutch. The freshman from Milton, Florida, makes a game-saving tackle, but let's go back to the touchdown throw from Brandon Cox to Cole Bennett. Dave, this is Bennett right here. He's going to come off the line and split the seam. The two safeties have got the outside. Right there, that's the man who has him, but you're going to see him blitz. Look, you see him both blitz. Now, freeze it right there. Look at the look at the distance. All you have to do is hit him. Wide open. Then he makes a nice run on the tail end of it. Hey, action from Connor. He's going deep. Incomplete in the end zone. Intended for Team Millens. David Irons on the coverage. First deep ball we've seen Mississippi State throw today. That last drive by Auburn was uh, pretty impressive, really. Eight plays, 59 yards. Converted a couple of third downs along the way. Three and a half minutes. And that successful drive means another $500 to the SEC's education initiative. Courtesy of Safe Auto Insurance Company. Call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO and you too can be a successful driver. The 52-yard kickoff return. Gives the Bulldogs pretty good field position. And second down, Norwood zigzags inside the 40. Probably picked up four on the play. Maybe now, three and a half. Dave, if I'm Mississippi State in this situation, I'm going to give the ball to my bell cow. That's Jarius Norwood, number 12. I'm going to let him carry. He has carries from last week, but he is a, an outstanding back. He can break at any time. Everybody's got tremendous respect for him. Why not go to him even more? Third down, though, you're probably going to have to throw the ball. Norwood finished second in the league in rushing last year, 1,050 yards. Wide open at the 20 is his tight end, Butler. He steps out of bounds at the 15. A big first down for the Bulldogs. And Butler didn't get the start today because of a bad ankle, but he looks pretty healthy to me. Well, they're moving Connor out of the pocket. Look at his little strong side waggle where he just comes strong side, gives him a little bit more vision. Looks downfield, finds his wide receiver. Eric Brock on that got a good, got, got a good tackle on the last part of the play. Butler got wide open on it. Gain of 24 yards. A sophomore out of Moss Point, Mississippi. Whistles blow, no play. Whistles big tackle. Wow. Nonetheless, it uh, will go for nine. Quentin Groves just swallowed him on that play. 54 got a good jump. I wonder if it was a little bit early. Prior to the snap, full start, 68 on the offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. They'll get Johnny Wadley. 
Well, you know, you got you to credit Groves on that play. I said he got a good jump. You watch movement if you're a defensive lineman. You go on ball. You don't go on sound. You come off on the ball. Groves said, hey, I saw uh, Johnny Wadley, number 68, move. Big down here. Boy, you want to keep this drive alive. Don't come away without any points. Mississippi State's had a couple of offside penalties on first downs as they forced them to first and 15 situations. They do it again here. Connor, good drop under pressure, dropped. They will say he is sacked at the 27 yard line by defensive tackle Wayne Dickens. Boy, and Dickens is a workhorse in here. Watch, you're going to see that Connor tries to step up and look at, look at, oh, he had his knees down. I want to say that first of all, good call by the official, had his knees down, but Dickens, his big man, 6'1", 300 pounds, really gets in there and just keeps on working. Just one of those, as you say, workhorses. I like that young man. I like his running mate next to him too, 58, T.J. Jackson. Good guys. It is second down and 23. The ball was spotted at the 15 on the initial drive. Connor tried to set up the screen, and he throws it straight down in the ground. The, a flag came in late, but Jarius Norwood was right there. Pressure came from Marquise Gunn, but, but he did not get outside the tackle box, and the ball did not cross the line of scrimmage. Exactly. Under pressure, look at this. He sees him, just throws it right down. That is a good call. You have to get outside here when you throw the ball. See him throw it right there? Yeah, Dave, but look at Norwood. Well, Norwood was there, but it, it, he, I don't think he really looked at Norwood. There's Norwood, number 12, but I don't know that he saw Norwood. But you got a point. It's a judgment call, yeah. so uh, a play that is uh, they're not going to stop play to look at that once again. Woody McCorby, the offensive coordinator. You can barely see him through the yeah. crack there. Well, one thing I wanted to point out, too, with, when uh, Connor threw that ball, he didn't really throw it at Norwood. He threw it at his feet. So maybe that was the call, but it's a judgment I understand call. what you're saying, but Norwood's right there. That's all I'm okay. saying. Yeah. I know what you're saying, but you know what I'm saying. I got you, buddy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Third down and a quarter of a mile. And Wilson's blow, it may be a half a mile. <laughs> Actually, it's going to be a timeout, Mississippi State. Their second timeout of the half. First down marker is down at the five yard line. We've got a long way to go. We'll return after these messages from Mississippi State and Auburn. Mississippi State seven to nothing. Last year, Auburn went to Starkville and beat this Bulldog Club 43-14 in the SEC opener for these two teams. Norwood takes it to the 30 yard line, but he needed to get down to the five. So that drive backpedaled and went uh, haywire rather quickly. Terrius Williams and T.J. Jackson converge on the tackle. Boy, this is a this is a tough call right here. They're going to kick a field goal. They've got a late person coming in. This is a long field goal. You're going to need a foot in this one. Keith Andrews, the junior. Last week his long was 37 yards. He was perfect on that. This is they will call it. A 48-yarder. It is on the way. He's got the leg. Oh, mercy. Oh. oh, so close. Oh, wow. Wow, this is the difference between. This is probably inches. We talk about inches. Look at this, fans. Inches. Oh. If it's 47 and a half, it's good. Oh, man. His long last year was 48. Tried to match it. Just fell shy. So Auburn takes over at the 31-yard line. A 52-yard kickoff return by Derek Pegues. Went for not. Little play action. Cox hits his tight end. Cole Bennett again. Boy, the tight end today, Cooper Wallace and Cole Bennett have been very busy. Our Hummer scoreboard shows us Maryland still out in front by three over Clemson. Michigan on the board in the second with a field goal. And Virginia Tech, a couple of first half touchdowns, first quarter touchdowns, and Army leading early over BC. Oklahoma over Tulsa. Boy, the Sooners 
Man, what happened to the, <laughs> wagon, the wheels on their wagon? <laughs> They're still in the barn. Kenny Irons dives forward close to midfield. He'll, he'll spot it at the 49, a gain of about four on the play. Michael Hurd. Dave, back to your point about the tight end, Cooper Wallace and Cole Bennett. Yesterday, Al Borges told us, the offensive coordinator said, tight end has got to be more of a factor in this game. Got to go to him more. Well, the sophomore, Brandon Cox, started. Didn't complete his first pass until the last minute of the first quarter. But today, he is off to a great start. Five out of six with a touchdown. First down, Auburn. Here he goes to Kenny Irons. Quentin Culberson brings him down. Well, now for a second there, I thought I saw a flash of Cadillac Williams. The same type of running style. It's quick through the hole. Did you see him just dart there? Look at this. You just lose him right in there. Irons only had one carry last week for six yards. Boy, and Evans, 36, got that upfield penetration, turned it back in. But you got to do a little bit more control. You just can't go upfield because they turn you out and run underneath you just like that, Dave. Another good play by Kenny Irons. Boy, he explodes yeah. to the hole, doesn't he? Oh, exactly. That's why I said I thought shades of Cadillac Williams because what he does is when he sees that hole, he just darts through it. He's like a flash, explodes. A lot of, that's tough to teach a running back that when you see the hole, you explode through it. Kenny Irons got lost over at South Carolina. We were over there when he was... Uh, this uh, sophomore season and just kind of fell out of the picture early in the season and never got back in it and after that he decided you know what if I want to play football I need to go somewhere else and he came here Cox scrambles to the 37 yard line Andrew Powell drags him down that'll be about a yard or two shy of the first down and it is a dog day afternoon temperature supposed to be in the 90s down on the field according to our meteorologist Dave Buzz Baker <laughs> 72 and sunny down there, right, Buzz? How is it, Buzz, down there, by the way? Seriously. Breezy. <laughs> I mean, it's in the 90s, but, I mean, there's a big breeze, unfortunately, uh, for Mississippi State. It wasn't at their backs a moment ago. They could have used it on that field goal by Andrews. But another third and short for the Tigers. This time, they'll hand it off and just get across the 35. It's Carl Stewart, and he was met in the hole by Quentin Culberson. Boy, and I'll tell you one thing, Culberson and Stewart, this is a stand-up. Who's going to win? Look at this. Stick him right there in the hole. He didn't get his legs up underneath him. Culberson didn't get his legs up. He didn't drive through, and he kind of caught him a little bit. It was a big hit. But you've got to give that one to the offensive player. That's one that uh, Stewart wins. Culberson, the initial defensive back, moved to outside linebacker last year. Now they've got him in the middle. <laughs> Out of the eye formation. This handoff goes to Carl Stewart to the 25, to the 20, and knocked out of bounds at the 16-yard line by Keith Fitzhugh. A gain of 18. Boy, that lead block is so important in a run like this. Look at, get outside. Look at 44 Slaughter. He just gets in there. That's what cleaned it out. The big pullback. And how about Jake Slaughter? You know what? Sometimes you get just as excited when you get a great block. Well, Jake has to get excited about a great block because he doesn't really carry the football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's not there to put his hands on the big skin. Well, he did his job that time. He cut him down outside. It was clear sail. Brad Lester, the single setback. A couple of tight ends. And Lester gets the carry on a huge hole off the left side. Inside the 10, down to the 8. Jeremy Johnson from a safety position makes the tackle a gain of 8. The first and 10 line is presented by Nexium, the purple pill. There is the purple line underneath that purple pill. I see it. Perfect. It's that first down marker. They have to make that line. It's the leading edge of that line, by the way, if you ever wanted to know. Man, that's how accurate it is. You've got to just touch that line. Beautiful picture. Second down and we'll say three. Big collision again at the six yard line. Lester met in the hole by Brad Horton. Boy, I'll tell you, that was close to the purple line that time. Lester just put his head down and just rammed in there. 
Tell you what, these running backs for Auburn are getting a lot of exercise today. They have run in and out of the game every play. All four have been involved. Trey Smith, Carl Stewart, Kenny Irons, and Brad Lester. And those guys have already amassed 68 yards on the ground on 17 carries. That's the end of the first quarter. Auburn leads it seven to nothing. Our all tell SEC game of the week. The loveliest village on the plains. See what this Bulldog defense can do on a third and one. And it has been uh, the quarterback sneak has been successful now. Uh, uh, three out of three. <laughs> You're right. Our McDonald's uh, first quarter stats. Wow. Brought to you by the quarter pounder. Woo. Look at that one. Minus six yards rushing. That isn't going to get it. Well, and Dave, last week they had 23 carries for 50 yards total did the Auburn running backs. This week uh, already 67 yards in the first quarter. And they've established that running game today. And Dave, to have the ball 10 and a half minutes in the first quarter. First and goal. Here's the handoff to Stewart. Tries to catch the outside, but the speed from middle linebacker Quentin Culberson and Clarence McDougal. And he may have lost a yard. Boy, that was a good play by Culberson. Did you see him dart up in there? Al Borges there going over to play saying, hey, need to get a little bit inside, need to maybe get a little bit outside. Got to get penetration, but got to pick up number two. Fun guy to talk with yesterday. Just, uh, man, I'll tell you, you talk about loose and relaxed. He was wonderful. I would, you know, I would say that it's it's got to be easy for a young quarterback to work with a guy like Al Borges. Oh, gosh. Dave, he may not take credit for Jason Campbell, but nobody changed Jason Campbell except him. The handoff goes to Stewart. He bounces around like a pinball to the five-yard line. That'll bring up third and goal. Culberson and Fitzhugh converge on that tackle. Boy, Quentin Culbertson, or excuse me, Leron Yarbrough steps in there instead of Fitzhugh. But Culberson has been all over the place. Five tackles already. Well, we saw that one in the middle where he had to stand him up, and Culberson had to move from the outside to the inside this year. Now, if it's me in this situation, I'm going to use my quarterback. I'm going to use a little rollout action where I've got that run pass option, get him outside of the pressure a little bit, maybe look for that dart pattern inside. He's got his wide receiver. Out to the outside, Taylor, he's a go-to guy. Over the middle, touchdown, Auburn. Devin Aroma should do his second of the season. Well, it was the same pattern, but it was a different person. But Aroma should do was wide open. You got to cover here. He comes off, he does that little dart back into the inside. Look how quickly Cox sees him. He's actually still backing up, and he's saying, wow, he's wide open. John Vaughn on to attempt the point after again. It is up and it is through. Fourth touchdown pass of the season for Brandon Cox. And Auburn leads it by two touchdowns as we are just a minute 56 into the second quarter. We uh, certainly appreciate everything they do. They are big fans of SEC football. Of course, they bring us on the air every week. And uh, congrats to them on their new number one hit. Don't forget, you can uh, catch them on tour right now. Deuces Wild with Big and Rich and the Warren Brothers. If that doesn't get you pumped up, nothing will. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the invite to come meet him at a concert. Come on, boys. Let's bring them up here with us. Come on. Hey, we're, we're going to Nashville next week. Hey, we'll find them. Because <laughs> I know they're not going <laughs> to find us. <laughs> yeah. They're saying, who are those guys? Right. <laughs> Some superheroes in the end zone at Auburn. The freshman, Derek McGee, trying to be one. He had a 52-yard return the last time he touched it, but that sails out of bounds. They'll bring it out to the 35-yard line. We were speaking of Al Borges moments ago, and for more on the offensive coordinator, let's go down to Buzz Baker. Boy, Dave, Al is one of these guys. He's a career football guy. It's been his whole life until just recently. He was a bachelor until six years ago when he met his wife, Nikki, and they have adopted a young son, Cole, who was born the day after the SEC championship win over Tennessee, and it has completely consumed his life. If you know Al Borges, he's the kind of guy that writes patterns on napkins, and now he's reading The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Uh, <laughs> 
we were talking to him yesterday and he goes home on Friday mornings and it, it is so great to see them so happy. The thing he's got to do is he can do like me and develop a receiver. What you do is you throw Chick-fil-A <laughs> right. over to the high chair and see if they can catch it. And Manning does not let anything hit the floor, I can tell you. Uh, I'm going to follow up on that in just a second. A funny story, Dave, with Al <laughs> and uh, his son Cole. Handoff first to Norwood. Look at him dance around. Picks up probably 10 on the play, close to the first down. But Dave, you know, his wife, uh, Al's wife, likes to call Cole a little nickname, as all mothers do, and fathers, and likes to call him Bear, you know. As, <laughs> and he says, you know, there's just something about calling my son while I'm an Auburn assistant coach, Bear. Yeah. So he says he's, it's been hard, but he's avoided it to this <laughs> point. <laughs> that was the greatest. I don't think that name's going to carry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love him. Boy, what a fun guy to play for. I mean, he was fun to talk with, so animated, so much enthusiasm. Norwood gets the carry. He only needed about a half a foot. Eric Brock brings him down. That will be good enough for a first down. And Mississippi State, Dave, really needs to get yeah. something going offensively. They, uh, they got it down to the 15-yard line on their last drive and backed up 25 yards. That can just really devastate a team, especially on the road. Yeah, when you're a young team and you're on the road, Dave, you have got to score when you get opportunities. They had a chance. Now they need Omar Connor to lead this team down there. They need to come away from scores. They forced Auburn to drive a long way, and they've only got 14 points, but they're going to get out of this quick if they don't get a big play. Demarcus Johnson steps in for Norwood, his first carry today. Interesting call that time by Auburn. They had a linebacker blitz. All three linebackers just flying up there. Look at them. One, two, three. They're all coming up in there. They just missed them. Boy, they were fortunate. Auburn was fortunate this didn't break. Because when you blitz those linebackers and you split that line, wham, you're in the secondary. Look for Connor to use that little bit of a rollout. He's got great movement, Dave. This, this young man, he's going to be a superstar just like Brandon Cox in the future. A couple of tight ends in the game. Here's Connor. Pressure comes from Travis Williams. And Connor is dropped right at the midfield stripe by three blue jerseys led by Will Herring. Travis Williams also in on the play. Boy, you, you know, your, your heart's in your throat on this play when he comes back around. Travis Williams, good pressure. You see him coming from the backside, number 51, and he runs them down. They've got great speed, these linebackers of Auburn. And Terrius Williams, Travis Williams, and Dee Dee, they can really get after you. Big down here, third down, don't want to give the ball up. Third and eight for the Bulldogs. Dropped at the 40. Did he lose the football? I believe he did, but he recovered it. And Mississippi State once again backpedals. That's the junior, Chris Browder, who forced the fumble. Look at this pressure. Great spin move inside. That is an outstanding move right there. Wow, that is an NFL move. Just, just spin off the play. Browder just comes off the ball, spins inside the lineman, and leaves him there. Oh my, that is, that's a good one. McAdams on to punt his first one, traveled 47 yards. This is a low end over end kick. Trey Smith picks it up at the 20. And Trey is dropped by Lance Long after a three yard return. So with 9.51 to go in the second quarter, Auburn leads by a couple of touchdowns. Mississippi State Bulldogs. In part by Toyota. Picture yeah, yeah, perfect blue skies for you here in Auburn, Alabama, as the Tigers trying to even their record at one and one. Lead by two touchdowns over Mississippi State. They'll take over at the 24-yard line. Brandon Cox will hand it off to Trey Smith to the 25 to the 26, and Culberson makes his sixth tackle of the afternoon. Hey, let's talk a little bit about these running backs because obviously uh, things didn't go their way last week, but it's a different story this afternoon. It is. You saw the first two plays by Kenny Irons. Then Carl Stewart, he knows what to do with it when he gets to the outside and rumbles, but they have, they have gotten an opportunity. They've got good line play. A lot of to the outside, Dave, they've been hooking the defensive ends. And look at what they lost yeah. from a year ago. Oh, I mean, boy. 
to say that the running game would be even close to what it was a year ago, uh, you, you can't say that. You just uh, you can't say it. You hope it's close, but yeah. But how often do you have a Cadillac Williams and Ronnie Brown in the same backfield? Trey Smith to the 30. That'll bring up third down. But you know, first time ever two running backs off the same college team drafted in the top five. I mean, it's never happened before. Probably never happen again. Well, Tommy Tuberville, I bet he misses them one more year. Wouldn't you just like to come back for one more year? Uh, but they they were marvelous football players. We got great enjoyment and what a treat for the SEC last year. I can tell you that when they saw the contracts thrown their way that their response of Tommy was begging and begging and begging. It was said, uh, no, thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> can I give you a loan? Yeah, <laughs> I remember that day. Gosh, I signed that big con. Yeah, right. Yeah. That big contract. How much was your first? Uh, 18,000 that first year, buddy. Wow. <laughs> flag down. Here's Cox. Scrambles out of trouble, lofts it up and out of bounds. But a flag down. Yeah, I saw. I thought I saw backside off offsides jumping in. Might have been Michael Hurd, number 58, jumping to that neutral zone. Thought he got back in time, but. Uh, Official down there, he threw the flag along the line of scrimmage. Offside on the defense, five yards better with results in a first down. That'll make Ellis Johnson an unhappy yeah. man. But let me go back to that. You signed $18,000 was your yeah. first contract. And what year was that? Uh, that was 1967, New Orleans Saints. I was uh, actually I was a second round draft choice and man I was so excited I was going to put money away for the rest <laughs> of my life. I hadn't seen uh, 18 dollars let alone 18,000. What do you think about guys oh. now signing for 15 oh. million dollar bonuses. Let me tell you all I need is the bonus. I never have to work again. You wouldn't see me buddy as much as I like you. I'm out of here. <laughs> Don't blame you. Cox over the middle. Trey Smith wide open at the 35. Drag down. Inside the 30 by Jeremy Johnson. They will spot it at the 27 yard line. Another big play by the Auburn defense. That one goes for 38 yards. And Dave, Trey Smith, you see him right there? He comes out of the backfield. He's a running back. He's small in stature at 5'10. He just kind of sneaks through there. And they thought he was blocking. He just kind of got swallowed up by those defensive and offensive linemen and just burst out into the middle. Boy, this is great play calling. I mean, they are taking advantage of Mississippi State mistakes. Five-man front by the Bulldog defense on first down and ten. Out of the eye. Well, that's how you stop it. You get in the backfield, get penetration. But is this the same Brandon Cox that uh, we saw last week? Well, you know, I, to, to his defense a little bit, uh, he just really got hammered. He never could get his yeah. feet set. Georgia Tech blitzing, 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 blitzing. 75, 80 percent of the time, he had somebody in his face, and uh, I think he never got settled. And uh, Dave, you know, you gotta like this play calling by this Al Borges offense today. Yeah, Dave. Remember what he said. He got enamored. He got intoxicated. He said with the matchups on the outside last week, the two big plays today, tight end running back out of the backfield. That's the way the West Coast really works. This time. Cox pitches tied in Cooper Wallace who got it back to the 28 yard line but uh, Brandon Cox good day today we just saw his number to mo numbers a moment ago yeah the tight end really opened it up for him he's gotten popped a little bit but tight end was so wide open and he just has looked downfield he's had a lot more confidence and that was something in talking with him yesterday I know you remarked about said he hasn't lost any confidence so he's having a, he's having a great day. I mean, this is what we expected to see out of this young and man. And Auburn certainly didn't plan on throwing the football 44 times no. last week. You know, last year Al Borges said they never threw it more than 37, it, and that was the last game of the year. Yeah, he said I kept on looking at those matchups and going, "Golly, we can throw it." And then they got behind, and then they were always trying to catch up. Cox in that pocket over the middle, batted in the air, and nearly picked off. Well, that probably oh. should have been picked off by Jeremy Johnson, the junior out of East Point, Georgia. Courtney Taylor was the intended target, but to be opportunistic, you've got to make plays like this. Yes, you do. you got to come up with this. Watch him here, Johnson, 34. Look at him come up right there. He's got it. He tips the ball, heads up play to come back for it, but you got to catch that. That's what Mississippi State needs in this football game. They need a turnover. They need a break. They need a stop. That broke a streak of seven straight completions for Brandon Cox. John Vaughn will attempt the 42-yarder. His okay. long last year was 43. And this one is no good. 
So the junior out of Brentwood, Tennessee. Doesn't make good on that field goal, but the Tigers still lead by two touchdowns. Back after work from your local stations. Game. We will revisit that in a moment. Oh, there's one. We'll give you that one. That'll help you. And then, and then there's one more rather recently. <laughs> okay, that's a little key. There's Johnson with a handoff off the right side on first down. Not much happening. Gunn makes the play. And Dave, here are some numbers for you right now. Time of possession, Auburn 16 minutes. Mississippi State seven and a half. Total plays offensively, Auburn 33. Mississippi State 15. And Mississippi State's not controlling the line of scrimmage on offense. They're not blowing them off. Auburn's moving to the football. There's a lot of clutter. For a Jarius Norwood, you need that seam. You've got to see that hole where you explode through. And he's kind of running under cautions, like he's just kind of jogging along, trying to wait for it to develop. And it's not. He sprints out in motion. Flags uh -huh. come now down. You, and now you get the tight end jump off sides. Eric Butler, Butler fell out of his stance. Prior to the snap, full start. 88 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Oh. Well, this fall, watch for the Geico College Football Campus Tour. A season-long traveling exhibit celebrating the 10 greatest quarterbacks of all time. Go to jpsports.com for more information to find out when Geico will be visiting a college campus near you. The 10 greatest college quarterbacks of I all know, time. I, Good I know luck a couple on. of them. <laughs> Jeez. You know, I saw Sylvester Croom shaking his head there. There's nothing that upsets a coach more than mental mistakes where you fall off the ball and you fall, go off sides, you don't go on, on the right count. Connor, right through the arms of T. Oh. Billings, the senior who has been playing well since the middle of last season, has got to make that catch, I would assume. How did he miss this? I went right through his hands. Look at this. Oh, man. And Omar Connor says, oh, man. Buzz, what do you got? Hey, Dave, you know, it's interesting to see the way Mississippi State is trying to adjust to the best abilities of its talent. We were talking with the coaches over the last couple of days. Not that true West Coast that they were running, but what they're doing with Omar Connor, he's such an athletic quarterback. They're trying to get him out on the edge, put pressure on the defense, and then make plays. That was the case there, except the pass has got to be caught. Absolutely. Well, if it's me, I come right back to the same type of a play. Got to go downfield, got to find somebody. Can T. Millens make up for it? Connor nowhere to go. Oh. Finds a receiver. It's Will Prosser, and he may have gotten the first. He does at the 42-yard line. I went back to look to make sure Connor was okay because he got stuck, but what an athletic play by the quarterback. T.J. Jackson put the pressure on him. It was. You're not going to see Prosser in the picture. There he is, number 11. Now watch right here. Your quarterback's in trouble. Look at him looking downfield. See Prosser come across on a crossing pattern. Gets wide open. Now, can they capitalize on that? That's a big play. It wasn't supposed to happen. Now you need to drive the length of the field. Get something going on offense. Get some continuity. Prosser tied for the team lead with 24 catches a year ago along with T. Millens. Let's play action. Honor. Pass incomplete. Eric Butler is tied in with a diving effort, but just short. Now to bring up second down and 10. And I think, well, as I say, second down and 10, Mississippi State has been in a lot of second and eight, second and nine, and then they've been stuck in the third and seven, third and eight, and it's just been tough to get to sustain a drive. Well, and the quarterback, you can see the results from the quarterback. He's not having a lot of success because those are definite passing situations. That's when they're, Auburn's coming after you. But the big play, Dave, you mentioned it, is not getting that yardage on first down. That run, it's got to bring up second and seven or less. First and ten line presented by Nexium, the purple pill. Flags down. Pass is caught by Keon Humphreys. Well, this was interesting. Two plays, uh, two flags way outside. You almost have to think of a hold in this situation. Somebody coming back and tackling. You see number 51 there. He's holding his jersey. That's Travis Williams. Well, Mississippi State. Holding on the offense, number 88. 10 yard penalty, repeat second out. Mississippi State, much uh, like uh, Auburn a week ago. And there's there's a look at the purple pill, just in case you didn't know what the purple pill looked like. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. <laughs> and they, of course, are uh, bringing us our purple line today. You see it over at the 48-yard line of Auburn. And once again, once again, Mississippi State 
backs up on a drive. Yeah, that, you just can't have negative yardage. You can't come up second down in 20, 30 yards. And Auburn has been almost perfect on penalties. I, I can't remember them having a penalty. Wide open on the near side of the field is T. Millens. That is a first down. How in the world did he get open? The Bulldogs will take it any way they can get it. Absolutely. You need big plays, and T. Millens almost makes up for that miss early. He just kind of gets out there and just kind of loses them. Pitts just kind of looked 19. He just kind of loses them there. And he comes and he comes underneath. And good night. Look at how wide open he is. You just don't get, you know, you're not supposed to have that much room. That's broken coverage. I wondered if Antarius Williams, 31, was supposed to have him. He was the closest one to him. That was second down and 20. They picked up 35. And it all started because Connor was able to get out of that pocket, get on the edge, get a little bit of movement. Connor. Oh, that dropped right. again. Oh, that's They're going to throw a flag, but here's my question, Dave. It looked like he was sacked before he threw the football and intended now if it could be a face mask or something else but if uh, it's grounding I will and it looks like it will be a face mask yeah his knee was down I think Groves was the one in there that might have gotten a hand on the mask that might have been you may be exactly right because his knee looked like it was yeah. down prior to him throwing that ball And you know I like this nice conversation right there. What you see? What you see? Well, He's you know, you know what we noticed with uh, with the replay being instilled this year is how correct these referees so are. Two fouls on the play, face masking, number 58 of the defense, intentional grounding, number 14 of the offense. Those penalties offset. Repeat first down. Well, we've all seen the devastation down in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, and there are many ways for you to help out the people that have been affected by Hurricane Katrina. But one way is through the Red Cross. If you'd like to make a donation for hurricane relief, log on to redcross.org or call 1-800-HELP-NOW. And earlier, this was earlier today outside Jordan-Hare Stadium, the Red Cross taking donations, and uh, I saw a lot of money in those buckets, and that was just the support we're seeing from people around, uh, not just these people, Parts, but across the country and the world. It's just truly amazing. First down and 10. That handoff goes to Johnson. We'll get a couple on the play. You know, you mentioned that, that great help for the Red Cross. How about the Mannings? Did you see Peyton and Eli fly into Baton Rouge? Their home was in New Orleans. They flew in there and did a wonderful job representing their family and, of course, the SEC. And we had a piece in our uh, Dave Baker in the pregame show today. Uh, uh, talking with the LSU players and uh, coaches, and and you could just see their faces. It's been a tiring week, 10 days oh, for boy. those guys, but they have all, to a player, to the coaches, have really helped out in Baton Rouge, the LSU team. Oh, big collision right at the line of scrimmage. The man who led the way was linebacker Ontarius Williams. Oh. Number 31, Ontarius Williams. Look at this. This is what you call stepping up, reading the play. Look at that tackle. Perfect. He's inside there, just kind of drives them back over. Boy, if you want to see what picture perfect football is, that's it. Drive them back. And what a fun guy to talk with yesterday, Ontarius. He said, if I do a good play, would you tell say that's for Coach Flowers and Coach Pitts back home? <laughs> yes, right. Okay, Coach, that's for you. There's defensive coordinator David Gibbs, the new defensive coordinator, takes over for Gene Chiswick. And that's Mr. Intensity. You talk about. Yes, he is. He is never <laughs> still. Look at him. <laughs> they say he sprints to and from practice every day. Flags are down. Oh, this was quarterback draw. And wow, did Connor have a hole. Flag is somebody moving early, but. Part of the snap, the way of game. Number 14 uh -huh. of the offense. Five-yard penalty. We made third down. Oh, penalties are killing Mississippi State today. You know, last year, this team wasn't uh, horrible in the penalty department. They 52 yards a game. They were right in the middle of the pack in the SEC. But today, seven already. Wow. That is amazing. Look at Auburn. None. They have played picture perfect ball. I think the team got the message this week. Yes, I think. Well, they, last week, they had, what, six or seven procedure penalties where they jumped off sides. I mean, those coaches came down on them. Big down here. Got to get some points in this situation. Third and 14, and a shovel pass to Johnson. Auburn right on it. 
But once again on a first and 10, Mississippi State ends up in third and more than 10 yards. Boy, and the backers are playing so well. 21, DD is just coming along the line. Big man there, the big guy, Jackson, slide the line. You don't play any better than that as a nose tackle. Fourth down coming up for the Bulldogs. They may be going for it. We'll return after this. It's our all-tell SEC game of the week right here on Jefferson Pilot Sports. And Dave Rowe, they decide to punt it away on fourth down and 12. I don't believe it until I see it. You don't punt from the 34-yard line? Golly, what are you trying? They are going to punt it to the corner. All right, I see it. <laughs> the freshman, McAdams, lofts it up. And it will be down. What a great kick. Well done by the freshman. So... Auburn will have a long way to go, 95 yards for a touchdown. Well, hungry for a big win? Enter at MillionNuggets.com for a chance to win one of over 15,000 Chick-fil-A small nugget trays and a chance at one of 13 grand prize trips to the 2005 SEC Championship game where you will compete for a chance to throw for $1 million. The first 300,000 register get a coupon for a free Dr. Pepper. Register at MillionNuggets.com before October 29th. Well, that's a lot to say. <laughs> that's a lot to eat, too. <laughs> yeah. 15,000 yeah. nugget trays. <laughs> Dave, I, I'll tell you, I, don't, I wouldn't mind this play if, I, if you had three timeout. Whoa. Trey Smith nearly got trapped inside the end zone. And you see Mississippi State call timeout, but they only had one timeout left. Clarence McDougal with another big play. Well, this is good penetration. Great coming off the line. Get in there. Oh. That's McDougal in there, and he just swallows them. They were fortunate that Trey Smith got out of the backfield. Boy, I'll tell you one thing, he's not far out of the backfield. But again, you got the ball here, you, all, you got a minute 12 left, you got no timeouts. Remember those two they wasted in the first half. Oh, I have, they kept that one timeout. I'm sorry, they let the clock run. Quarterback sneak. That'll get it back to the original line of scrimmage. Andrew Powell makes the tackle, but that's now third down. Yeah. 55 seconds to play, and now Mississippi State will take a timeout. <laughs> so they will get the football back, but for how long is the question? <laughs> that is, if Auburn doesn't convert to third down, of course. Well, log on to jpsports.com. Click on the Regents Bank Road Trip Planner for the quickest routes and all the information you need traveling around the SEC. And you can join us in Nashville next week as Ole Miss and the Commodores square off. 11.30 Central, 12.30 Eastern Time from Music City, USA. It's Tommy Tuberville talking with Al Borges and his quarterback, Brandon Cox. You know, Tommy was telling us that you know, he doesn't really want to get into the head of his quarterback. He says he doesn't need more than one guy giving him instruction. So this week, we asked Tommy what he said to Brandon Cox. He said nothing. I told him to keep his head up. You did some good things. And that was really about it in terms of trying to uh, get him through the week. Because he said, you know, one guy's enough. Yeah, the one that's in his head is Al Borges, and that's enough. But uh, you bring up a great point. I saw when I was when I was watching the play in between here, I saw Cole Bennett talk to Tuberville on the sideline, and Borges on the sideline. They just sent him in. I'm wondering if they're thinking tight end sneak off the line. They've had a great success with that tight end play. So third down and 11. And Cox will do the quarterback sneak. That will give Auburn a chance to punt it. And the clock ticks at 46, 45. No way to stop the clock. They're out of timeouts. Well, you got to hurry here. The clock is set. They're going to get the ball back. They'll probably have to be forced to punt with, what, probably about 13, 12, 13 seconds. Nope, about seven or eight seconds now. I was thinking safety in this situation. You know, you take the ball, catch it in the back of the end zone, and just walk out. You know that Mississippi State's going to come hard after them trying to get the block. There will be about eight seconds. And okay. Auburn will probably just let the clock run out. Well, I think what they'll do, either let the clock run all the way down or call timeout exactly. because they have three, or two, I should say, left. And they will stop it at eight seconds, call timeout. You 
You know, it's great to come to Auburn and you look up and you see some of the uh, Bo Jacksons, the Terry Beasleys, Pat Sullivan's, Shook Jordan's, Bo Jacksons, and and this man, Pat Dye, the former Auburn head coach, was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame this year. The Georgia native spent 12 years on the Plains. He ended his time here with 99 wins. I always wonder if he was disappointed he never got to 100. He also had four SEC titles, and he now lives outside Auburn on his, get this, 740-acre ranch. He does a little fishing, a little hunting, and pretty much whatever else he wants to do. It's just a, an awesome piece of land. And you know, one of the great things, I had a chance to do a show with him. It's, it's hard to believe it's been 10 or 11 years now, but uh, Pat Dye, Barbara Dooley, the wife of Vince Dooley, and I hosted an SEC football show back in 94, 95. And uh, what a great year it was for me. We just had a lot of fun. It was uh, great. So it's always good to come here and uh, uh, see some of the Pat Dye players, Pat Dye, and part of the history of the Southeastern Conference. Uh, it is. It's a, it's a very storied history. You know, I'm sitting here just kind of thinking, what is Auburn going to do? Do they, do they snap the ball short and run a play? Well, then they give the ball back to Mississippi set. I think you, what you do is in this situation, you either take a safety or you punt it. Most likely, if you don't get rushed, just punt the ball. Get it out of trouble. Don't worry about getting distance and looking pretty. Well, there's 10 on the line of scrimmage. And nine come, and Cody Bliss sends it to Jonathan Lowe at the 45. Jonathan to the 30, and he falls there, and that'll do it for the first half. So Auburn puts up 14 first half points. A couple of first quarter touchdowns will send Auburn to the locker room leading at the break. Dave Baker down on the field waiting to catch up with uh, head coach Tommy Tuberville on a warm afternoon here on the Plains. Dave Baker is waiting for the coach right now. Let's go downstairs. Buzz. Thanks, Dave. Tommy, you got the two good touchdown drives, a penalty-free first half for you. Yeah, we, we played pretty good. We're playing more consistent. Obviously, we were running the ball, and that's helped. Uh, they're, they're doing a good job. They've got a lot of speed on defense. They're, their pursuit's killing us on our inside running game, but, uh, you know, we just got to play stronger. I'm proud of our defense. We, You know, that guy's hard to get out, yes, sir. as we've noticed, so uh, we just got to keep playing and pick our kicking game up a little bit. We've made way too many mistakes in the kicking game. Thanks, Tommy. We appreciate it. Best of luck second half. That's Tommy Tuberville as he goes to the locker room with his Auburn Tigers leading Mississippi State by a count of 14 to nothing. SEC football is being brought to you by Advance Auto Parts, by GMC, by Pizza Hut, by Aaron Sales and Lease Ownership, by Safe Auto Insurance, by Pontiac, and by Sonic Drive-In. at Toomer's Corner. What a picturesque place at any time of the year. Toomer's Corner and the campus here at Auburn. 14 to nothing. Tigers lead over Mississippi State. Two more quarters of play coming your way. An interesting uh, first half for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. They kept backing up. I mean, they'd get a first down, and the next thing you know, it's third and 20, third and 25. Well, Dave Baker's with uh, Sylvester Croom right now. Buzz? Some good things happen in the first half and then kind of shot yourself in the foot once you got to the other end of the field. Yeah, I mean, we should be down by uh, at least two or three more touchdowns. We had about five pre-snap penalties every time we got something started. But, uh, hey, I'm not even worried about the first half. Now, we're not going to great tomorrow. I want to see 30 minutes of the most physical football you've been seen on this field. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. As you can tell, Dave, uh, <laughs> oh, not, he, not a very happy Sylvester crew. Yeah, he was almost uh, going to show you some of that physicalness we are going to expect in the second half. I like that. Let me tell you <laughs> what he just said. He said... He went into his locker room. He said, forget the first half. We didn't play well. We are going to go out there. We're not looking at the film. I promise you, we will look at the second half. Expect a different team under Sylvester Croom. 
in the second half, I can tell you. Yeah, I'm anxious to see them play. Well, Dave Baker's back down on the sidelines and has a very special guest from Chick-fil-A, our good friends at Chick-fil-A. Buzz? Oh, you're right, Dave. Steve Robinson is the uh, senior vice president of marketing. He's the chief marketing officer. Chick-fil-A and Dr. Pepper have teamed up for a great giveaway, and it's great to have you all a part of the SEC again. Well, thank you, Dave. You know, this is the tailgate season. Yes, sir. And uh, we're doing a promotion with uh, Dr. Pepper called Million Nugget Giveaway. You're giving away a million nuggets? We are giving away a million nuggets, actually in the form of over 15,000 uh, Chick-fil-A nugget trays. Wow. And uh, people can go to uh, millionnuggets.com and register to win. And in fact, the first 300 people, 300,000 people right. that just show up, they'll win a free Dr. Pepper to Chick-fil-A. Wow. So, uh, in fact, I figured it up. A million nuggets. Everybody in the stadium today would probably have at least a dozen, and there'd still be some left for you and me. Well, that would be if Dave Rowe didn't get a hold of them. The thing, the, the thing about it, Stephen, we got some video of the trays out there today. This is a this is a great fit for you folks, and yeah. and we don't know who's going to be in the SEC championship game, but folks can already get themselves to the championship. They can. Game. In fact, if they go to mannuggets.com, uh, they have an opportunity to register to win 13 trips to the SEC championship as our guest and the guest of Dr. Pepper. And uh, that'll be a random drawing from whoever registers on the site. They don't get to come. They can always come back to Atlanta, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. How about that? And those that do win those 13 trips will have a chance to kick for a million dollars or throw for a million dollars, I think. Uh, as part of a competition in Atlanta. Wow, Steve, when you think about families, you think about the SEC, you think about the atmosphere on days like this, it's a perfect fit with Chick-fil-A. It is. We, um, we love college athletics. Our fans, our customers, our fans, yes, sir. are big college fans. And uh, we love being associated with college athletics, SEC, ACC, Big 12, yes, as well as Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Well, we appreciate you being back with us here on JP Sports. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. All Thank right. you very much. All right, back up to you, Dave. Thank you, Buzz. Never play golf with Steve Robinson. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you have come anything up with on that. the line, he's a he's a heck of a golfer. That's for sure. Auburn uh, leads by a couple of touchdowns, and looks like Johnny Wadley starts oh. the <laughs> second half, much like Mississippi State started the first half. And look at that look. Mmm. You don't want to do that. You know how he's standing by himself right now. Yeah, there is nobody standing <laughs> around him. Look at her. Let me see that shaking of the head. Mm. Oh man, I can remember my days when John Madden used to shake his head like that. And I'd walk down and I'd say, uh, Coach, I think it was the snap count that pulled me off. Well, it happened the first, oh. first play from scrimmage yep. to start the game as well. Here's Norwood. He'll get maybe a yard on the play. TJ Jackson, the senior out of Opelika. Oh, I love that man. 6'1, 305 pounds. Oh, I love him. Boy, yeah. I'll tell you, was he fun <laughs> yesterday? He's a prototype of that big nose tackle. He fights off, uses his hands, moves to the ball. And you talk about animated. That guy is a character. What a fun time we had. He was there when Williams, and he said to me, he said, Well, if you're going to say hello to his coach, you better make sure you tell Coach McCracken at Opelika High School I said hello. Let's watch the big boy right in the middle. A little reverse. T. Millens to the 30, to the 31 drop there. That'll bring up a third down and about eight on the play. Patrick Lee, the sophomore corner out of Miami, Florida, makes the stop for Auburn. And Dave, you brought up a really good point for Mississippi State. You cannot get in this third and 10 situation. You cannot lose five yards on first down and then come up your second and 15. It's just, it's a deep hole to fight out of. You've got to come up with that second and six plus in that range. This is long yardage. Today, Bulldogs are two out of six on third down conversions. Last year, as an offense, Mississippi State was ninth in the league, 38%. Connor over the middle pass is caught by Prosser and that will be a Bulldog first down gain of 14 on the play they only needed nine boy and Connor was under pressure TJ Jackson 58 coming off the ball good swim move now look you got to get rid of him jerk him slide him around that's the way the big man runs in there and Connor sitting back there he sees that pressure steps a little bit and gets hit late but finds his receiver finds Prosser downfield that's a positive play. Dave, Omar Connor, that's a difference from a year ago. He sat in that pocket and waited for the play yeah. to develop. 
That handoff goes to Demarcus Johnson, the freshman out of College Park, Georgia. He's gotten a lot of work today. And Dave, look at that situation. They run the first down, they pick up six, seven yards on the play. It gives your offense something, an alternative, something to do. That's the kind of football that Sylvester Broom wants to see. You see him there instructing him, listen, that's the way you play. You come off that ball hard, get that first down yardage. Don't put yourself in trouble. Now, Auburn, they need to step up their play. They don't want Mississippi State to drive this ball the length of the field, score, and take back momentum. Second down and four. Here's Norwood trying to get to the outside. Good stiff arm to the 45, and Patrick Lee rides that Jarius Norwood train out of bounds. Now, it, it's tough for him. He can't shake some of these Auburn defenders. Look where he's running. He's going this way. He's going to the left. He's running east and west. He's got to get upfield. Norwood is a great runner when he gets through that hole, uses that little loose of speed, darts back and forth. Well, that is a first down by Norwood. Let's check in with Buzz West Moore on Jarius. Dave, keep an eye on him. He's a guy they've been fighting to keep well. He missed the last couple series of the first half. He's got a sprained right shoulder. They braced it up. So whenever he runs to the right side and has to lower that right shoulder, keep your eye open to see how he takes the hit. Absolutely, Buzz. Good tidbit for us to keep an eye on. Norwood will run left, gets a decent block, and picks up nine, maybe ten on the play. Patrick Lee seeing a lot of Jarius Norwood here of late. This, this is a great run. He's going strong side right there. Now look at that cut back against the grain. Now he fakes one guy out, digs inside, picks up positive yards. This is the Norwood. This is grinded out football. If they had started off the game like this, they might be in a lot better position. Second and very short. And this is the down as an offensive coordinator you really love. Second and one gives you the entire playbook. Absolutely. Woody McCorvey, offensive coordinator, he, he's foaming on that one. We'll go straight handoff using Johnson. He'll pick up the first down. Tripped up on the play by Eric Brock. It was fun to get a chance to talk to Woody McCorvey, the offensive coordinator for Mississippi State. He said, we've got, there he is up in the, up in the booth right there. He's kind of. You can't really I, see I him. He's, he's back there. Right yeah. There. But Woody's a fun guy to talk to. He brought in Casey Clawson. And I know Casey talked to you down on the. Uh, yeah, we uh, talked for a long time. He's a graduate assistant here at Mississippi State. And uh, says he enjoys his time with this entire Bulldog coaching staff. The handoff gets about another yard, but Casey Clawson gave the NFL a shot. He was a free agent, went to uh, NFL Europe, uh, didn't see a whole lot of time, came back and uh, decided to work with, uh, there's Woody McCormick. Yeah, Backing there he up. is. Lean forward, coach. There we go. But he was at Tennessee when Casey Clawson was there, and those two established an outstanding relationship. And when Woody heard that Katie, Casey might be interested in getting back into SEC football, he said, you're more than welcome to come here and uh, watch tape with me and break down game film. And he said he loves it. He said that it's just been so enjoyable. Norwood, pressure comes, lofts it up, looking for his tight end, it's picked off. Eric Brock to the 25. A pass that Connor probably shouldn't have thrown. Nope, should not have thrown. He was in the clutches, he was going down. Antarius Williams, 31, had him. Sometimes you've got to eat the ball. 31's gonna get him right in here. He's gonna see him. Now he just twists around, look, he just throws it up. And in this ball game, you can't flow the ball. You can't throw it up like that. You throw it up like that, look at the defender coming back. Everybody yells hot. That's Eric Brock, 33. Auburn will have the football when we come back. We'll return after this message from Pontiac and the G6 driving experience. Fans getting a little crazy in support of their Tigers. Leaded by a couple of touchdowns. Interception gives the ball back to Auburn at the 26-yard line. Their first drive of the second half. Oh, audible first play. Look at the audibles call. That handoff goes to Carl Stewart, the sophomore at Al Alcoa, Tennessee. Michael Hurd makes the tackle for the Bulldogs. Aaron scoreboard, Maryland. Boy, Clemson, they win a big one, and then they yeah, can't seem to ever follow it up. Notre Dame leading wow. by 11 in the third quarter over Michigan and Virginia Tech putting it on Duke 28 to nothing and Boston College fell behind 7 nothing but I think they've responded uh, appropriately and Purdue over Akron by 7. 
It's our Iron scoreboard here. It's 14 nothing. Whistles blow. Clock was down to zero. They might not have reset it. Maybe that's what the official looked at. Not much of a rhythm in the game today. No. Well, let's see what the call was. <laughs> He's saying, are you sure it wasn't zero? <laughs> Please reset the game clock to 10.03. There it is, and we got a fresh 25 second clock as well. Our referee Matt Austin in control. So second down and seven. Out of the eye, slaughter your fullback. Stewart your tailback. And another check off at the line of scrimmage from Brandon Cox. Off tackle goes Stewart. Out to the 34 yard line. That'll be about a yard or two shy of the first down. We talked earlier in the game about the Auburn center position. Joe Cope, Stephen Ross kind of flip-flopping on who will get most of the snaps. Dave Baker has more on that. You know, Dave, Al Borges said it's just like a great baseball team. You've got to be strong up the middle. Joe Cope, he was a four-year starter at Andalusia High School. So when he got out of school, what does he do? He comes to Auburn as an 18-year-old, and he convinces Hugh Nall to let him walk on. Guess what? He's a scholarship player now. He's out there starting, and his dad has got one of the best football names. He played here as well. Lucky. Brandon Cox trying to get lucky with his tight end, Cooper Wallace, but a little bit overthrown McDougal on the coverage. Buzz? I'm sorry, Dave. What I was saying was, in addition to all that, you know, he goes ahead, Lucky Cope, his dad gets him to come here and talk to Hugh Nall. And then in his spare time when he was in high school, he owned his own grass cutting business. <laughs> just, a, just in a few minutes when he wasn't trying to make one of the best D1 teams in the country. But it, but it really is a great story yeah. of how uh, how work can pay off for you. You know, I always I always admire them players. I played with players that have walked on. Just give me an opportunity, coach. I'll prove myself. Not not maybe not great enough to get a scholarship in high school, but walk on and prove himself. Wow. What a punt by Cody Bliss. The geese has to call a fair catch at the five yard line. 61 yards in the air. My goodness, what a punt. The junior out of Brentwood, Tennessee. Back after this. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Dave Neal, Dave Rowe, and Dave Baker at Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. And some noise from the Jordan Hare crowd of over 80,000. As Mississippi State on first down from the five. Might have lost a yard. It was Norwood. First hit came from Stanley McClover, the sophomore, who was, uh, hasn't exactly garnered uh, a lot of coaching praise in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> Very tactful. Nice way yeah. to say it. Coach is not happy with the sophomore, who they have high expectations for this season. Uh, his first tackle today. But Quinton Groves came over to start for him today, and Stanley has come off the bench. And I'll tell you this, you play like your coach, and they are playing like David Gibbs. They're, they're intense, they're playing, they've got great speed to the ball, they're not getting knocked down. Auburn's defense, I want to tell you, they cannot play better than they've played right now. Uh, they've only given up one or two uh, plays that were breakdowns defensively from uh, my layman's eyes. And, of course, the big number is zero on the scoreboard for Mississippi State. And no penalty still? I'll just double-check, absolutely. <laughs> Zero penalties, zero yards. That is amazing. I don't know the last time I've seen a game this late. Please reset the game clock to 8:22. But I, I, I can't remember the last time I've seen a game with no penalties. I mean, they had so many penalties well, it's last. It's not over week. yet. I understand that, but, <laughs> but we're getting late in. <laughs> I don't remember going past halftime with the yeah. Raiders and not having at least. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a that's the Raiders. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was waiting for you to say. <laughs> yeah. it. <laughs> on the kickoff, you guys were generally flagged. Last week versus Georgia Tech, those 11 penalties. Golly. And nothing today. Yeah, I would say right now, just looking at this defense, that David Gibbs, defensive uh, coordinator, definitely got their attention. 
You got mine. <laughs> yeah. Here it is, second down and 12. Norwood. Bobble. Caught on the far side by Millens, and I think that Bobble. Loose football. It's on the ground. Touchdown, Tigers. The defensive touchdown for Auburn as T. Millens never had good possession of the football. Watch to the right of your screen, fans. You're going to see him. Watch him bobble it. Bobble, bobble, bobble. He never puts the ball away. And he gets the ball cut. You have to credit Auburn. They ripped the ball out there and went in there and just pulled it out. Look at this. Never got the ball put away. Watch the hand come in and knock it right there. You see the ball come out. Heads up. Play by Auburn. One after is up and good. And Boy, that can be uh, uh, just a real killer for the Bulldogs today. As Auburn's lead is now three touchdowns. We'll return after work from your local stations. Wake up. Cody Bliss will kick it off for the Auburn Tigers as they lead by 21 points, 754 to go in the third quarter. High kick that will settle at the goal line. Derek Pagese to the 20. And that is where he will stop. There's Cody Bliss, Dave. And we bring up Cody is because his last punt, you hear, you, you hear coaches talk about uh, flipping the field. Well, Cody's 61-yard punt in the air set up their touchdown. And you can't overlook his effort. Absolutely. Set him back inside the five-yard line. It's a team play. And then you see this play. Oh, everybody flying to the ball. I think Millen's just dropped the ball, just fell out of the back. But look at the heads up play, but look at the number of blue shirts in that picture. There were you nine. Had me, you had me looking at a lot right there. Yeah. Well, there were nine guys in that <laughs> yeah. picture, all wearing blue shirts. And there's more blue shirts swarming to the football. Brad Brandon Thornton with his first carry today, hit by TJ Jackson, who makes five stops from his nose tackle position. But I want to tell you, T.J. Jackson, he just, he just, I, when I looked at him, I just thought about myself. Not that I maybe wasn't that great a player. He's a wonderful player. But I looked down there. I mean, he I'm going to let that go. No, I mean, he's a great football player. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm talking about college. I didn't play nose tackle in college. But when I look down at him, I see him all doing all the things that I like to do. Reading the ball. Reading the weight of the offensive lineman. Are they coming up? Are you looking at white knuckles? Coming off the ball and making a difference. The big man just keeps on swarming to the play. He's not getting cut off. He's using those big arms. He's playing marvelous. Thornton on the carry for Mississippi State. But there is T.J. Jackson. So what you're saying, he's a nose tackle who's trying to make this an art form. Absolutely. Last week he played 65 plays. I want to tell God, you. Which is a ton oh, for man, somebody on Dave. that. And you're right. He does. It, it is an art play. You've got to get your hands up there. You've got to control that center. You've got to keep him from cutting you off. You can't let him reach or scoop block. And the big man is playing well, so. Uh, well, he had 51 tackles last year, and uh, that was fourth on the team from your nose guard. I know. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. You're always doubled in there. Connor has to throw on third and seven. Sanders caught it and was hit immediately by David Irons. Well, coaches told us that David Irons need to step up his play. And I think he does on this. Brings him down. Look at that tackle. See, when you tackle, you don't tackle to somebody. You tackle through them. David Irons makes a big stick right there. Out of the Kula, Georgia. Brother of Kenny Irons, the running back. Blake McAdams to punt it away. Hangs in the air, and Trey Smith will let it bounce at the... 30 and it will settle at the 26 yard line. And Albert will take over from there. And once again, the first and 10 line presented by Nexium, the purple pill. This defense for Mississippi State Day, for the uh, most part, they have uh, they've been on the field quite a bit today, and they're not a, an extremely deep defense. 
Yeah you're right Dave they have been on the field a lot of times they haven't been able fortunately for them they've made Auburn drive a long ways but uh, and they haven't had to turn over deep in territory other than that one for Millens but you've got to get that defense all you got to have that offense come and do three or four series get some first downs take pressure Cox avoids trouble and then gets slammed to the ground at the 30 yard line Jeremy Johnson among the Bulldogs Jamar Cheney also in there, the true freshman out of Fort Pierce, Florida. Good pressure from the outside. You make him step up. When he steps up, you got to have a lineman or a backer come across to make a tackle. That's what they did. They, they forced him up in the pocket, made him pay for it, but he still picked up about four or five yards. You got to have that block up in front. Brandon Cox will turn 22 on October 31st. Halloween. He's just a sophomore. They said he can be as good as Jason Campbell. Can be. That's quite a year. A little screen pass. Read well, but Stewart breaks a couple of tackles. Instead of a five-yard loss, he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Boy, surprised to see Quentin Culberson, number two, miss a tackle. Uh, five, four or five missed tackles by Mississippi State. Not a lot, but you don't expect somebody like Quentin Culberson to miss them. When he gets his hands on you, he usually rips you down, number two. Probably overall the team's most complete defensive player, Clarence McDougal, probably the most consistent. And as his coach, uh, Ellis Johnson, said, he's smarter than most of the coaches, Clarence McDougal. He just understands this defense really well. And good read on the play from Jeremy Johnson as he stepped in front of Ben Obamadu. And that'll fall incomplete and a good stand by the Bulldogs yeah, that time. Three and out. Absolutely. That time Johnson planted, came back up there and dove in front. Yeah, all of a sudden I get the feeling that Mississippi State is playing a little bit more, with a little, a little bit more relaxation. They've been tense. They've been tight. Things haven't given, been going their way. Now can they get something going on offense against this Auburn defense that, believe me, is playing some good football? That's the third straight three and out for the Auburn offense. Line drive kick this time by Bliss. It'll be returnable. Jonathan Lowe to the 38-yard line. Well, during the first half, we asked this all tell text to win SEC trivia challenge. How many undefeated seasons has Auburn had since 1950? Well, we showed you two of the banners. Yeah, I know. So it's three. <laughs> And you can tune in next week for your chance to play Text to Win SEC Trivia Challenge presented by Alltel. 1957, 93, and 04. You see that 57 national championship. Perfect season in 93. Last year, was, that was a perfect season, too. That was about as flawless as it can get. Connor goes up top. Batted away at the last moment by Jonathan Wilhite, the sophomore out of Monroe. Intended receiver was Joey Sanders. Good look at the ball. Quarterback under pressure. Dickens getting pressure on him right there. See Dickens coming in on him. Now look at this. Play the ball. Don't play the man. He goes up, knocks the ball away. That is perfect play. Nice play by Will Height right there. Go up high. Don't put your hand on the man. That's a foul. And you get the right. You're, he's right. He gets a moment to strut. That'll bring up second down and 10. Eric Ambrose in the backfield. And he'll get the handoff. Try to get to room, uh, some room on the near Ooh. side. And he does turn the corner. And Ambrose is run out of bounds at the 47-yard line by Steve Gandy. I didn't think Ambrose could get that corner, but the running back with few carries today. Interesting play. Watch the quarterback play. It's almost like a delay. Watch him right here. He delays. He's going to get the snap. Now watch right here. Just steps right there. Now he just stands there. Boom. He breaks it to the outside. Gets the corner. Good block downfield. They pick up the corner. I was surprised there wasn't a penalty there at the tail end because he was a couple yards out of bounds when he got tackled. And for Ambrose, his first carry goes for 15 yards, and a flag comes down. Well, it's not a clock. <laughs> I can tell you that. And Kim Anderson, our spotter, may have spotted that the coaches from Mississippi State were out on the field, and perhaps they were warned one too many times. Boy, there's some intensity right there, that man. 
but hasn't he done a good job with this Mississippi State team. Tommy Tuberville looks across the field. Well, we'll wait and sort this out. If it's against Mississippi State, uh, that hat might just blow. Off for a little substitution. Mississippi's the coach was calling timeout. Timeout, Mississippi State, the first of the half. All right, so our spotter, Kim Anderson, did notice the coaches on the field, but they were just trying to get a timeout, and they did get their timeout with 4.08 to go here in the third quarter, trailing by 21. Well, join us next Saturday, 11.30 Central, 12.30 Eastern time as Ole Miss invades the Music City, the Battle of Vanderbilt. The Rebels are looking for a big season with first-year head coach Ed Orgeron. Now, despite returning only 13 starters, the Rebels plan to play good old hard-nosed football. Vanderbilt comes into this game fresh off their first season opening win in eight years. Jay Cutler with a nice evening with 276 yards in the air. The Commodores are hungry for another win. It's the Jefferson Sports, Jefferson Pilot Sports SEC Game of the Week, 1230 Eastern. And don't forget, you can log on to jpsports.com and click on the Regions Bank Road Trip Planner for the quickest routes and all the information you need traveling around the SEC. I'm anxious to see that Vanderbilt team. And I Jay know. Cutler, you know, you, you just hear all these coaches rave and rave about him. And, he, you know, he was great last year. How much better could he be? Well, we'll find out next Saturday in Nashville. Well, Dave, I got a chance to watch that game. They played Wake Forest, and I'll tell you this. Late in the game, Wake Forest took the, took the lead, and Vandy didn't quit. They drove the they drove the field through the score at the tail end of the game, and I was I was shocked because so many times Vandy has run out of gas. Well, first down and ten near midfield. That handoff goes to Ambrose again. He runs hard and picks up seven on the play. Will Herring hangs on for his fifth tackle. Will opened up the season with 13 stops. Had a career high against Georgia Tech. You know, not only is he a hard-hitting safety day, but he calls himself a, uh, a chess geek. I don't know many football players that would openly refer to themselves as chess geeks <laughs> <laughs> but that's what will herring calls himself <laughs> but he plays that chess game out there at safety boy coaches love having him on the field and off gets about to two yards stanley mcclover able to hit Derek ambrose that'll be just shy of the first down Let's check in with Buzz, who has more on that uh, that defense and uh, defensive coordinator David Gibbs. Boy, he was really hard on himself, Dave, uh, about what happened last week. But what he wants to do is that pro experience. He wants the corners to really press. Now with a three-touchdown lead, he's got a chance to do that, and we're seeing some of that. Back to your chess comment. Wasn't the big fellow next to you, wasn't he a stamp geek once upon a time? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Good one. On third and one. Wide open hole in the middle of that line, and that's a first down for Mississippi State. Derek Ambrose on the carry, brought down by Kevin Hobbs. Oh, and that's the first time I've seen a real hole open up there. Ambrose just scattered through it and just picked up that possible yard. To let Buzz know, yes, I was a stamp geek. But again, right here, watch the hole. When you see the hole, the hole is going to develop right here. There's the hole. You've got to see it. The play is designed to go over here. You've got to make the adjustment. Look at that. See, you pick it up. That's vision into the hole. That's what I talk about when I say you've got to see the hole before it opens up or as it's opening up. Yeah, it looks like James Redmond, an offensive lineman down on the field for Mississippi State. Mm, you hate to see that the big man. But these don't these trainers do a marvelous job. They take them out there. They, they settle them down, just kind of calm them down find out what's going on they don't make mistakes they are great additions to this game that staff helping out and uh, James hobbling the junior out of Decatur Georgia and, you know we have all seen the devastation down in Louisiana Mississippi and Alabama of course it's hard to uh, to miss the pictures every day and, but there are many ways for you to help out the people that have been affected by Hurricane Katrina but one way is through the Red Cross if you'd like to make a donation for hurricane relief don't forget log on to redcross.org or call 1-800-HELP-NOW. I got to tell you, uh, living in Atlanta, there's a, a major Red Cross artery there in uh, Midtown Atlanta, and I had a chance to drive by there a couple times last week, and the, the, the hustle and bustle, the amount of people, the donations is uh, just amazing. 
on first down and 10. Here are the Bulldogs. Connor rolls right. He keeps rolling and rolls right out of bounds after about a yard gain. And oh, there could have been a flag at the tail end of that. Well, there was a collision oh. right as Connor was heading out of bounds. Ontarius Williams and Desmond Sherrod. What's the hit? Up. Ooh, that was yeah. not good. Show but Dave, that is not, once again, all the plays are reviewed. That's not yeah. just every play, but that is not a play that they can overrule. Yeah, a little bit better second half by the Bulldogs. Yeah. 3-3 three, three and outs by Auburn. They've only amassed 12 yards here in the third quarter. This time, Connor rolls near side. Throws, and he short hops it. Joey Sanders was open, but Connor just couldn't get it to him. Boy, it's a good play. Get outside, use that edge. Fake a little bit, come out there, got the roll. He's got a pass option, square up. Delivers a nice ball. Look at the trajectory of the ball. I can say that easy. The trajectory of the ball is good. Just throws it a little bit short, but he squares up nice. That's just the difference, just a little bit of a difference here and there. Now it'll be third down and almost 10 yards. Big down here. They're four out of nine on third down conversions this afternoon. You know the big boys in blue are going to be coming after them. And I believe Auburn wanted a timeout. I saw David Gibbs, the defensive coordinator, running out on the field. Or We'll find out right here. Timeout, Auburn, equipment violation. Their first time out of the half. I couldn't see who was having some equipment issues. We told you about Jarius Norwood and his shoulder problems. For more on Jarius, let's check in with Dave Baker. Buzz? Yeah, Dave, right now it's just a pain threshold thing. We told you that late in the first half, he sprained that right shoulder. They went ahead and put it in a brace. He's only got 10 carries for 39 yards. Uh, the uh, Mississippi State medical staff just said as he can tolerate the pain, he'll play. He hadn't been in there for the last couple of series when they've been getting good yards up the middle. James Redman, remember when Sylvester Croom came back on the field at the start of the second half and was so happy? He yeah. said he wanted to make <laughs> sure that things got a lot more physical. James Redman, the offensive lineman who went out hurt, isn't even on the too deep depth chart. He's one of those guys that was put in there to make some things happen. He was doing that. Now he sits on the Mississippi State bench. He's got a sprained knee, will not return. Mm, thank you, Buzz. A vote for the toughest play of the week and a chance to win a brand new Polaris ATV in the Polaris Tough Play of the Week contest. Visit PolarisToughPlays.com and watch clips of this week's toughest plays. Vote for your favorite and enter to win. Quick schools of thought here, Dave. If you're Auburn, you don't sit back. You come after them. They've had good success getting penetration and concerning Omar Connor. If you're Mississippi State, use that edge play where you roll him out. He was really close that last time. They may be able to slide Sanders out into the flat or something, but this is a big one right here. Butler, the tight end in motion. The quarterback keeper. And Connor gets four on the play. Well shy of the first down. Travis Williams with the stop for Auburn. As the clock approaches, two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Dave, what do you do? Fourth down, down 21. Oh, you go for it. Dave. There's no doubt you go for it. But I was surprised at that play. Auburn has moved quickly to the ball. They've got great pursuit. They play well with their hands. They're not knocked down. That surprised me. Well, I think maybe Mississippi State wanted to make it a fourth and reasonable distance, give themselves a chance. Woody McCordy, the offensive coordinator, we'll see what he calls on this play. So it's fourth down and a long five, short six. He's got one at one on the top. He's got man-on-man -man coverage. Connor fires. Pass through the hands of his running back, or excuse me, receiver Aubrey Bell, the freshman. Boy, beautifully thrown ball. It was there. Again, use that little pressure to get outside there. Now square up. He's got him right there. And he just overthrows the bell. But again, this is a very catchable ball. Nice movement. Again, good delivery. And look at that ball. Look at the difference right there. So Auburn takes over. 
Line up in the eye formation on first and 10 from the 28 yard line. And down goes Brandon Cox, just like that. Willie Evans, I don't think anybody touched him. I <laughs> what, barely saw him. What he did is he <laughs> gave a head fake to the outside, come underneath on the gap, just did a rip, and I mean he was there. Look at him right here, back inside. Great swim move over top. Man, when you're a quarterback, <laughs> you're not, I mean, you're not even back there setting up and you see 36 in your face. That's what they need. Willie Evans coming off the ball like that. His second sack of the year. He's 272. He's a hoss. With great quickness for somebody his size. Will delay handoff. Running room for Kitty Irons. He'll get it back to the 28-yard line and is thrown to the ground there. And Crowd wanted a flag. Yeah, they did. They won the late hit. But, Dave, I didn't hear the whistle. As I watched David Hurd come up, I never heard the whistle. And the running back had his feet. He was still digging. So they gave him the advantage there to see if he could break out. That's not a bad call. Here it is in real speed. That was not a that was not a late. He was already airborne when the whistle blew. Exactly. What do exactly. you want him to do? <laughs> hold him up in midair? No, nah, if you're on defense, you don't hold him up unless there's a few more, <laughs> well, I thought, few coming, more voids coming. Coming from the big man, I didn't expect anything less. Well, Auburn's offense has become somewhat stagnant here in the third quarter. That's the bad news. The good news is they lead it by 21, and their defense is throwing a shutout. Back for the fourth quarter after this. The week from the loveliest village on the plains. 21 nothing. Auburn leads, but they look at a third down and 12. Out of the shotgun is Cox. Four receiver set. Cox has time, throws deep over the middle, picked off, and then dropped. That is the second time that Mississippi State has had what should have been an interception. And basically, it was a good punt. Ben Obamanu was the intended receiver, but nonetheless, here comes the Tigers' punt team regardless. Interesting defense. They put two defensive linemen. Look at this. Coming across the middle. Johnson, 34. He's got it. Oh, mercy. He just said, I didn't look it all the way. It hit him in a bad place. The hands. <laughs> Gosh. Got to catch that. Well, now Bliss will punt into the wind. Jonathan Lowe back to return. He stands at the 25. A wobbly kick. Lowe will field it and then drop it and then pick it up. Boy, what an effort there by Lowe to get back on that ball, Dave. If he hadn't, I wouldn't have been wanting to run over there. He'd have been he yeah, running toward us. Oh, boy. <laughs> Our Gatorade stats through three, quarter, three quarters. And Auburn's total offense in the, first, uh, in the third quarter, seven yards. Yeah, look at that rushing yardage there for Mississippi State. They got some rushing yardage. They've gotten some positive plays. Now, Connor needs to take control. You know, he just needs to get out there and be a leader on this football team. He's a junior. He's got some experience now. Prove it. Connor throws it high, but the pass is caught by Millens out to the 45-yard line. Boy, what a different team Millens this year. You noted that in our, in our workups. He is just a different player than he's been in the past. Millens is a, a young man that was uh, he wasn't he wasn't uh, what did he say he wasn't on the bus he wasn't he wasn't in the bus he wasn't on the bus he was under the bus early last year but didn't have the proper attitude practice habits and he says as the season went on T developed that and this year has been a real real solid leader for this football team as a senior that pass caught by the tight end Eric Butler not much happening on the play that'll be That'll be close to a first down where they mark his forward progress. Kevin Hobbs runs him out of bounds. Let's see what they... They'll say it's third down and short. Third down and one, maybe less than a yard. Well, I think all of a sudden I see a little bounce in Omar Connor. He's got a little bit more swagger to him. It's like he's taking a deep breath. Knows he has to do something. I don't know. I don't Ambrose so. put his hand down to keep from falling to the ground. I don't think he made the purple line, to be honest with you. Oh, and he didn't. Good penetration.
penetration. That's what you do. You hit him in the backfield. Great penetration there. I think it was a backer that was coming in underneath, slicing underneath, took his legs out from under him. McAdams, wobbly kick. That will hit near the 25-yard line. That is where they will spot it. 21 0. Auburn leads. They have the football back for fourth quarter action right after this. In part by Chevrolet. And of course, we can't forget about our military in Iraq. There is uh, Miss Gibson, her husband Terry, and serving in Iraq. Out of Brookhaven, Number Mississippi, and saying that uh, some of the troops watching us overseas. Troops have been kind of uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan have uh, kind of been lost in this whole Gulf Coast thing. Yeah. But uh, certainly can't forget about those men and women as well. Second and 10 now for the Auburn Tigers. And Dave, what's happened here offensively? 10 yards, uh, total of 10 yards in the third quarter. Not much going on at all. I mean, it has just come to a grinding halt. Well, when, when Sylvester Croom said they were going to come out and play more physical, the defense is playing more physical. The offense is not. They're not moving the ball well. But this defense is playing hard. I yeah, mean, I would say look at that. A nice collision. <laughs> Kenny Irons hit by yeah, Quentin Culberson number, and Andrew Powell. Watch number two come in here. Boom. That's the way you come in there. I like him. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He doesn't have the size for a middle linebacker, but he's got nine tackles. I mean, he moves to the ball well. He's 225 pounds. That's a little bit light for a middle linebacker. He's more used to that outside backer, but I love his speed. Auburn has misfired on their last five third down opportunities. It is third and seven. Cox over the middle. As his receiver, Obermano, he gets across the 35, and that will be a first down to stop, stop that streak. That's their first first down this half. That is incredible. Obamano does a good job. It's that little slice pattern back inside. He catches it and just makes that first down. One thing that Auburn has is tremendous speed at those wide outs. There's Al Borges, the offensive coordinator. And you look, try to find some balance. They have, uh, Auburn has run the ball 33 times. They have thrown it 14. A couple of tight ends in the game. That handoff goes to Irons, and he is met by a swarming bunch of Bulldogs in white jerseys led by Titus Brown. Boy, and Mississippi State is coming off the ball. I talked about them playing a lot more physical in the second half. They are. They're coming off the ball. They're getting penetration. Titus Brown, 54, moving to the ball, getting an opportunity to play. And that's what Sylvester Croom and his staff will look for. They're going to look for effort first. Single setback is Irons on a second down and 13. Handoff goes to Kenny. He spins out of two tackles to the 40. Keeps his feet moving and is dropped just across the 40-yard line. Anthony Littlejohn led the way for the Bulldogs. Boy, I love yards after, yards after contact, Dave. Look at that. He's hit there. He's hit there. He's running. He's hit there. He's still running. He's hit again. I want to tell you something right now. That is what you want in a running back. You know what that reminds me of? Looking at Cadillac Williams and Ronnie Brown for a long time and saying, hey, I can run like that. Third down and six. Spread formation. Look at those rushing yards by half. Oh, look at this time. Cox lofts it up in the air. A misread with Courtney Taylor, and Auburn will have to punt it away with 9.33 to go in the game. Ellis Johnson's defense really swarming, which is somewhat shocking on a day where the temperatures are 90 degrees. They've been, their defense has been on the field, especially the first half, was on the field quite a bit. But they are still getting to the football. Yes, they are. They're not getting tired. They've been out there a lot of snaps, getting to the ball. As you say, a lot of swarming. That's what you want. Cody Bliss to punt it away. Jonathan Lowe stands at the 17, will field it at the 16, makes one man miss, and then slips down at the 17-yard line. 
Stoppage in play with 9.22 to go in the game. We'll return to Auburn after this. The first and 10 line is presented by Nexium, the Purple Pill. As the Auburn defense back on the field, Mississippi State first and 10 from the 18 yard line. And offensively speaking, Jarius Norwood with that bad shoulder only has 10 carries for 39 yards. T. Millens leads the way in receiving for the Bulldogs. Four catches, 54 yards. Connor, 10 out of 18, one interception, 116 yards on the day. Down goes Connor at the 10. Quentin Groves from the backside drops. Connor, a loss of eight. This is a secondary sack. You can't hold the ball this long. Look at Groves. He comes all the way from the backside around the horn to get him. Again, you've got to know where that pressure is. You've got to look down. You can't take that much time. It's just too long. That is a secondary sack. And Omar Connor's going to learn that real quick. But heads up play by Groves. Yeah, Groves has been uh, quite active today. A couple of quarterback pressures and a sack now. That'll bring up second down and 18. Will delay handoff. There's a scene for Ambrose. Ambrose out over the 20 to the 22 yard line. Steve Gandy, the freshman out of Waynesboro, Mississippi. Well, get credit for that tackle, but a nice game that brings it up to a respectable third and seven now. Boy, that changes the complexion. If you're in that third down and plus 10, it's tough. Now you can use uh, Omar Connor. Now he can, he has a, a makeable third down. If you're sitting there with Auburn, you're turning around saying, hey, get off the ball, move to the ball quickly. Don't allow, throw it, let him throw it underneath, but come up and tackle him short. Flag down in the backfield, passes dropped. A couple of flags come flying in, and that defensive pressure, that front line, from Auburn forcing some of those linemen from Auburn to grab onto some jerseys. Yeah, I think Marquis Gunn is the one that was going to be held. I think Anderson is the one who held him. Boy, this Auburn defense, Dave, has oh. uh, been pretty impressive. They have come after. They got a lot of pressure on the quarterback, sacked him. The big man in the middle, TJ, moving to the ball, looking good. You can see right here, this is the Millen's fumble. They pick it up. They didn't, they know what to do with it. They scored. And then great play by Will Height in the secondary. They have played well. This is that sack at the tail end of, of this last play. But they have really come up. They are doing exactly what their coach wants them to do, David Gibbs. Play. That's the way you play defense. You play defense all out. You make a mistake, at least it's at full speed. Well, he said he's just going to simplify things so these guys can just go out and play. McAdams punt taken by Robert Dunn. Flag down at the 40 as the scrum. <laughs> That's what it looked like. A falls scrum. out of bounds. Fifty one yard punt. Would this be the first penalty against Auburn? If it's accepted, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I told you I haven't seen many games holding number 27 of the receiving team. It's 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. That's it. Penalty number one against the Auburn Tigers after 11 last week. There's a timeout on the field. We'll return to Auburn after this. Look at those numbers, 38 touchdowns, but the fact that they had 63 possessions in that red zone, amazing. And that red zone powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. That handoff goes off the right side. Kenny Irons, the junior, with the carry. Kenny, 11 carries, 33, 34 yards on the afternoon. Corey Clark makes the stop. But, uh, Dave, that red zone statistic to me, oh. 63 opportunities in the red zone. And you, you go back and you, and you look at uh, Mississippi State. Now, I know it was a struggle for the Bulldogs last year a little bit, but they only had 28 opportunities. I know. When you, you talk about starts, talk about 63 times. You divide <laughs> that by a number of games. You're in the red <laughs> zone a lot. lot. Out of the eye formation on second down and 10. Uh, 
cut back and stopped at the 30 yard line by a horde of white jerseys led by Jeremy Johnson. Also Michael Hurd on the play. Good penetration on the strong side. You see right there, there's nowhere to go on that strong side. Johnson comes up there, Hurd comes up there, and they've got him wrestled in. But you're getting a lot of new fresh bodies in there from Mississippi State, getting an opportunity to play. Some of the tired guys are in there too, but you gotta, you gotta look for effort. You see the third down conversion, six out of 13 for Auburn. One for their last seven. Tied in, Cooper Wallace in motion, Cox to throw. Long out pattern is caught at the 48 of Mississippi State. That's the true freshman out of Augusta, Georgia, Robert Dunn, knocked out of bounds by Kevin Dockery. Gain of 22. Beautiful pattern, comes off the ball. See, he makes his, he makes his safety bite on that little play. He gets even with him, squats him down, makes that cut outside, looks the ball in. That's what you want. Boy, from a freshman. Yeah, they're high on Robert Dunn. Didn't get a whole lot of time in week number one. Dave, a lot of people might question why you keep Brandon Cox in here. And keep him in because he's got his confidence. Cox lofts it up. Looking near side. Great athletic play on the near sideline down to the 10 yard line. Rodriguez Smith with an excellent catch, a gain of 38 on the play. Yeah, under a lot of pressure, he throws this thing up. Look at this, almost like a basketball block. Use that body, and he does use that body. And watch this, he gets good position. Now, just keep him behind you, look the ball in. He was looking back. That really, I mean, against David Hurd, that's pretty good coverage. Redshirt freshman out of Snellville, Georgia. But you got your quarterback, he's got a lot of confidence, everything's going right for him, build on it. Fumble, who's got it? And the Bulldogs will recover the fumble. Kenny Irons in the open field. Drop the football on the turf, the Bulldogs pick it up. Kevin Dockery with the recovery. Well, you never know when those plays are going to happen. Good pursuit is what made that play work. Mississippi State will have it when we come back. It's by 21, they just cough it up. The Bulldogs take over at the 12-yard line. And Michael Hennig takes over at quarterback for Mississippi State. Brandon Thornton is your tailback. Thornton out to the 15 and tripped up at the 16-yard line. And today we showed you what the Auburn offense did in the red zone a year ago. Well, Mississippi State not very effective defensively stopping teams inside the red zone last year. They were uh, gave up points to the tune of 88% of the time, 31 scoring opportunities out of 35 possessions, but they got a big time stop there as Irons turned it over on the fumble. That's the red zone, powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. Out of the eye formation. Handoff again goes to Thornton, and he'll take it out near the 20-yard line. That'll bring up third down and a couple of yards. Dave, Mississippi State trying to run the game. You don't want to just get into a throw in this situation. You got a new quarterback, let him get a little bit of confidence, hand the ball off, get a couple smacks on his hand with that ball, then let him throw it. Henning, the freshman out of Montgomery, Alabama, 6'1", 180. Good opportunity for him. Get some snaps, get some experience in front of a big crowd, and they're hostile. Tough yards by Thornton. Uh, needed to get to the 22-yard line and for the first down, and he may have done so as we look at the Aaron scoreboard. Clemson comes back wow. to beat Maryland. They wow. were down 10 in that game late and came back for the win. And Notre Dame over Michigan on the road, up by two touchdowns late in the fourth. They may be for real. Virginia Tech. They're for real. <laughs> Boston College down 7-0. Scores 37 straight points, and Oklahoma struggling with Tulsa. 
Purdue over Akron by a couple of touchdowns. That's our Aaron scoreboard. Here's Hennig's pass. It is caught at the 28-yard line by Lance Long, the sophomore. Dave, you start looking at uh, Sylvester Croom, starts looking at this new quarterback, Michael Hennig, and what, you, what you're looking for is poise in the pocket, running out there, taking control of the team. You're looking for voice tempo, look for play selection, adjustments. So far, he's looked pretty good. I know that Auburn's made a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, changes in their lineup, but this is what you're looking for, positive strides. Offensive linemen, do they go through their proper procedure, blocking techniques, and things like that. And off goes to Thornton, and he dropped the football, and I think Auburn has it. They do with 2.52 to play in the game. You got to put that ball away when you're in trouble, when you're going down. Everybody's ripping the ball. Now, was he down? Let's see this. See if he was down. Oh, you know what? I don't, I'm not sure he wasn't down. Ooh, that was, again, I want to see when that knee goes down. Watch right in here. Ah, the ball's out. That's a good call. The ball's out before. Again, the ball is out right in there. You see the ball starting to come out right there. Well, the recovery by Courtney Harden will give Auburn the possession at the 30-yard line. 2.52 to play in the game. These replay officials watch every play. And Cox still in at quarterback. We'll hand it off to Lester. He gets the corner to the 10, inside the 10, down to the eight-yard line. It'll be first and goal Auburn. How about Brad Lester getting an opportunity? Good draw play right here. Gets it now. Get to the outside. Use that speed. He's not a big guy, but he's got speed. Just a red shirt freshman puts that hand down. Nice play. Now watch that hole. See it. Get to the outside. Use what you do best. I like that, putting that shoulder down at the tail end. Out of the eye formation. Lester, the tailback, will get another carry. Down to the six-yard line. And he stopped there. Our red zone, powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience, shows us today Auburn one out of two in the red zone. Last time they were here was just a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. They're going to get 68 more this year, or 66 more. They're going to have to load it up a few more. I'd come right back with Lester again. Hey, keep on giving it to him. Second and go goal from the six. Here's Lester. They give it to him, and he does the rest. Touchdown, Auburn. Boy, untouched. The only thing felt, he fell down in the end zone, but nobody touched him. Nice look into the play. Good slide, now watch right here. They caught him in a blitz. Action, he just makes people miss. The little guy, he knows where that end zone is. Look at him just dart there. Sees that line and dives for it. Again, slide, see that plant, put that foot down, that vision into the hole. Hey, we're hearing from a red shirt freshman. He's gonna make a name for himself. He's getting an opportunity. One after is up and good by John Vaughn. That'll make it 28 to nothing with just over two minutes to play in this game. And one of the one of the problems, Dave, that uh, Auburn had was the fact that they didn't play a lot of guys. I think it was a total of 31 players in game number one. Tommy Tuberville really wanted to get more players on the field. And we saw that in the first series when he rotated four tailbacks. Exactly, exactly right, Dave. You've got a lot of players in. You've got an opportunity. Do it. Yep. Get that experience, that game experience. Well, let's uh, check in once again with Dave Buzz Baker. He has a little bit more on last year's uh, undefeated season. Yeah, it was a perfect season, Dave. And, of course, everybody here thought the Tigers ought to have the opportunity to pay, play for the national championship. Tommy Tuberville lobbied awfully hard. And at one point in time, remember, he said, you know, I've got a subscription to Golf Digest. Maybe they'll name us number one. And by golly, didn't they? <laughs> I mean, pretty, pretty, pretty good stuff. I, I, he actually got to meet the guy, I'm told, at, uh, at, at the Masters. And, of course, they went ahead and gave everybody national championship rings as they believe they can lay legitimate claim to a national championship. It was a magical season. And when people see uh, some of the struggles, despite this four-touchdown game right now that they're going through an offense here in the second half, 
I mean, it's like you pointed out before, Dave, when you lose that much talent in one backfield, maybe you won't have that much talent in a backfield ever again. It just shows you how special it was a year ago. Yeah, it, it, the expectations, it's uh, just it's, it's impossible to make that comparison. I mean, uh, really, I mean, when are you going to have a Ronnie Brown and a Cadillac well, Williams in your backfield and a quarterback, Jason Campbell, who completed 65% of his passes and probably made four mistakes all year? Uh, that's the point. The point is that they didn't have one great Bo Jackson or somebody like that. They had two running backs that were incredible and a quarterback. That's amazing. Line drive kick will sail out of bounds, and Mississippi State will take it at the 35-yard line. Not a very long drive for the Auburn Tigers on that last touchdown, but you know what? It was successful, and that means that, su that successful drive gives us another $500 to the SEC's education initiative, courtesy of Safe Auto Insurance Company. Call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO, and you, too, can be a successful driver. That is our referee today, who has uh, done a nice job managing this particular contest on a uh, warm, you could say warm afternoon. Matt Austin, Wilbur Hackett Jr., Johnny Crawford, Paul Patrisco, Charles Showalter, Chuck Ross, Russ, and Timothy Smith are our crew today. Well, Buzz, uh, I guess a lot of people are uh, curious about what's going to happen with some of the football games in the coming weeks and months, and Mississippi State involved in one of those dilemmas. What's uh, What's been the story with their next outing? They were scheduled to play next uh, Saturday, of course, in the Superdome against Tulane. That won't happen. The game has now been moved to Shreveport next Saturday night. Uh, the, the, uh, the folks there at Shreveport, they're just going to cover their expenses. Mississippi State has given their guarantee that they get for the game back uh, to uh, to help Tulane with this athletics department, and of course those athletes at Tulane, they're spread out all over the South. They got some folks at Texas A&M, and they got some teams at other places. One other update that we found about uh, found out about in the last 12 hours or so: the opener for LSU against North Texas, uh, which was postponed last week, has now been rescheduled for October the 29th. They say that game is going to be played in Baton Rouge. That is the first official game we know of that will be played in Baton Rouge. A lot of people wondering what's going to happen next week. Uh, in the coming weeks, I guess Tennessee heads down there, and you know the number of people that will converge on Baton Rouge still waiting for information on how that's going to be handled. Handled. That pass is caught by Jeremy Jones. Freshman, shy of the first down. The Auburn Tigers, of course, uh, opened up with a a doozy of a game, long-time rivalry going way back against Georgia Tech. They lose that, but then they, you know, they've got four more home games after that Tech game, five straight to open up the season before they go to Arkansas and LSU. I mean, here's a chance to get to 2-0 in league play if they can handle South Carolina mm -hmm. before they go on the road to Arkansas yeah. and LSU. But the clock winds down, Dave. That'll do it. Tommy Tuberville evens. His record at one and one here in 2005. Not a pretty performance to say the least, but it was effective. David Gibbs defense throws a shutout. The Tigers win it 28 to nothing over Sylvester Crooms, Mississippi State Bulldogs. We'll come back, have more from Auburn after this. Mississippi State came to the Plains looking for the upset. Did not happen today as Auburn jumped out to an early 14 to nothing lead. They would hold on to win 28 to nothing and pitch the shutout in their SEC opener. It is their 10th consecutive SEC victory. Next week, we'll see you in Nashville as Ole Miss comes to call. And so for our entire crew, I'm Dave Neal saying so long, everybody. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports, exclusive coverage of Southeastern Conference football. It's more than an investment in their college. It's an investment in their dreams. Call us to learn about the